Hi, it's Eliana at Awakening Cosmic Reality Show, and today we have with us Matthew Morian, who is a psychic and a multidimensional healer. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is a real honor to be with you again. It's been some time since we talked, and like we were saying right before we came in here, so much has changed. We're on a whole different timeline now, but, but yeah, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Definitely so much is shifting and transforming. I, I think things are going to get better and things are really going to ramp up in, in the transformational era where we're going to, to a better place and just getting everything worked out and cycled through. Totally, totally. I say this every single time I do anything on anyone's channel. This is the best time we could have ever chosen to be born on planet Earth. This is it literally now. And so, um, yeah. I'm yes. Yeah, we're, we're all here to do our part to raise the frequency, to raise the light, and to embody a good energy, I think. Um, so you approached me a few days ago about what's going on, what you've been involved in so would you like to describe that so totally yeah yeah um and i will i will start by saying i have discovered over the years that i am a very tangential speaker so i want you to interrupt me as soon as i go on too long because i'll just i'll just go through the journey but um we are in a stage right now at least i know myself and many others and i believe yourself um, in a period of enhanced connectivity with a number of what we would call soul councils, energy of soul councils, um, and almost ancestral energies that will sort of activate it at timed intervals on the earth plane. We are at one of the stages in our physical life cycle right now in which additional what we might call strands of DNA or wavelengths of the body are becoming a bit more available. And so along with that, and this is something that's going to be taking place not only for uh, you know myself, but most of the people that will hear my voice, because one of the things we're doing today is bringing codes for a very specific frequency to assist in unlocking in the human body. And that is the, the frequency of our soul resonance, or what some people would even call realms or planets, races and beings that we have been in the past. And so right now, um, we are in a reactivation of what we would call an Orion energy kind of resurgence. And um, I'm one of the people on the earth plane right now who took it upon them through a series of encounters and visits and kind of downloads and all sorts of encounters that I've had over the past two years. Um, we have been authorized to begin to announce and to discuss this new wavelength of energy from Orion and to help people kind of discern and understand um, the ways in which it is also being misused on the earth plane in which there are many. Um, and so um, I'm just one of many representatives and sort of uh, people that were authorized to speak on this in the moment. For me, it started uh, with a series of encounters that led to uh, me creating a series of videos in 2020, which we are, which we are aware of, which I'll just, I won't even go into the content of those, but um, through the experiences that I had at that stage of my life, what I began to understand was that I was in contact with what we call a council. And there's been a lot of talk of it lately, <laughs> but um, it was a council of between nine and 13 beings that will work on behalf of an individual in their physical life cycle. It's a discovery that nearly every awakening being is going to have on the journey when our consciousness reaches a certain point. And so for me, I began to encounter this group of beings from Orion. I did not know they were from Orion at the time. In fact, it took me about a year to kind of further discern and to understand through the work that I was doing that that was part of the message that I was being given. But um, over the past year that I've been going through these experiences, it wasn't really something that I was talking about. I kind of stepped back from a lot of like elements of talking about extraterrestrial matters and the videos that I've been doing and the work that I've been doing, I kind of stepped back from that. And in the meantime, just, you know, went on through all these series of experiences until November, I believe, or I, actually it was around September, I think, when the, when the messages and the visions started coming in. But through practices of remote viewing and kind of dream work that I've been doing, um, I began to notice and kind of track activations of energies that were sort of awakening, which kind of coincided with what I approached you about, activation of what appeared to be ships, not only ships, but also structures in the ground. And so um, that could take us in a number of directions. I want to pause because I'll keep going on and on on that. Do you have any questions on that so far? Or is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I understand exactly what you're talking about because 
what I've been feeling is that the negative grays agendas are being slowly removed from this planet. And there's certain people that these grays have been manipulating and they're innocent people. They're innocent bystanders. They had no idea what was happening to them. But from a remote viewing point of view, I can see who's being programmed with SSP programming, Dark Fleet. Um, and there's other SSP programs that are running in people. I myself was part SSP. So I'm aware of the programming to a certain extent. My addiction was technology in the SSP. So I could say that's how I got into that because they lured me in with technology, giving me access to medical technology, regeneration technology, holographic technology. This is what they gave me. And I said, yes, I agreed. Um, I don't feel that I have the mind control programming running from in my brain because the high guard, there's the high guard that literally break down people's mind and body through pain, and then they insert this programming. So I'm aware that the high guard does this on Mars. Um, and it runs in certain people like the person like last year that you were talking right, about. Right. The karmic stuff right. catching up to that person, that person has that programming running. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No names, nothing on this channel. <laughs> I don't do names. Yeah, I feel you. All of the, all of like the empaths and the psychics that watch you, they're going to go, oh, oh. So yeah, no, perfect. Totally. Yeah, no you. names, but we know the person. He's a, per they're, they're a perfect example of that programming. Yep. You and I saw that we, we did our own things about that person um, to warn the communities. You know, that was done. We did our work because we're, we're <laughs> the ones that do the due diligence. Yeah, so yeah. there's that kind of programming, but there's other um, psychics, empaths that I noticed. I was asked to scan a person to do a show five times. And, and, and before a show, I always scan the person. And when I scanned this person, again, no names, I felt that this beautiful blonde woman was being controlled by five different grays from afar with holographic photonic technology. And they were just talking, they were mixing in SSP, they were mixing mm -hmm. in called something called the Earth Alliance, which is doesn't exist. It's it's called something else. So, and they were like, med beds are coming, med beds are coming, lunar space operations is making bed, med beds, it's being retrofitted. No, they're not. When I had a look, lunar space operations is continuing as usual with Space Force, the Navy and Space Command, they're working with them. They're not gonna bring us med beds tomorrow or today. I totally so, agree. And, and this person was interjecting the Galactic Federation of Worlds always. Mm -hmm. They're not working with the Galactic Federation of Worlds. They're being controlled by Greys. So this mm -hmm. was an agenda, and I did two videos about this without saying the person's name. So, and these beautiful young women are being controlled and blonde. For some reason, these Greys mm -hmm. choose blonde, beautiful women that yeah. are eager to get the message out to the public, to manipulate them. So this is what I was seeing, and it's a Grey agenda. And yeah. not, these grays are hive mind. So, and that got me, I had to take a moment and step back and ask spirit, how do I present this? Because I have to warn people as a healer, I have an obligation and a duty to do the videos, to tell people without interfering with a person's uh, human soul free will, if you will. And so spirit said, just, just give the information what you remote viewed as you did without the name and people mm -hmm. will understand eventually who this is because the council of nine and and it doesn't have a specific origin orion or anything it's just vibrates at the ninth dimension to the 24th i call it the council of nine and they told me eventually all of this will come out you leave it alone this is not your highway to go into. All the people who've 
not been saying much about this will eventually say what they need to and step forward in their truth and their highest ability to do their best. So I was told to step back because I didn't directly know the woman that I was asked to interview. I didn't know her. So I was not to free will, not to interfere with her free will, just yeah. let whoever was you know, involved with these things, figure it out and tell their own truth and all in good time. The council told me to stay out of it and spirit said, stay out of it. You do what you need to with these two videos about the grays and their agenda, then leave it alone. So that's yeah. what I did. And these arc ships kept popping up in my books because I was doing psychic readings. It popped up in the psychic readings. It popped out from my own experiences about these arc ships. So I just took the stuff from the book that I'm writing and I said, this is what my experiences are. And this is what's right now happening. I did some remote viewing as well. So it's a mixture of remote viewing experiences and they're activating to DNA frequencies and cycles. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, wow. So there's, there's so much there. Get ready. I'm going to rewind all the way back. First off, this will be, this will seem like a non sequitorial comment, but you're tell you're like uh, telepathic kind of sending ability is off the chart because we got, it was the name and the person and everything came out like literally out of your eyes as you said that. Thank you. Um, I've been in a bubble. So I'm like, Hmm, okay. I noticed they were talked about in another uh, video recently as well. And so I will look more into that. That's very cool. Um, uh, it does kind of coincide with uh, a little bit of a thing that I have observed with respect to how some people are tuning into a very, uh, it's like a recorded frequency. Um, the recorded frequency will kind of work with, in some cases, layers of implantation, but it's a little bit of a misnomer because in many cases, the implant's not within the body. It's actually like a etheric a device or almost like a node point that will exist in astral space within our vicinity. And so one of the reasons why those recordings persist, another very common one is Ashtar command. That's a really common sort of like, a, it's almost like a 4D kind of like a recording that exists. And so there's that, there's a Galactic Federation of Worlds one. And what they essentially are, at least from my point of view, is a recording that the energy body will tune into at a certain stage. If the emotions, if the energies, if the influences are right, you begin to receive the recording. The, the recording for some people will mimic the act of channeling, which isn't really channeling. You're just listening to a thing and then repeating what's being given rather than an exchange. And so um, that is a very, very real thing that is happening right now. And um, I, I think for a lot of us, the reason why it does persist is because they'll try to clear themselves and it's not an internal energy. It's an interference frequency that exists outside of us. And so um, anyway, yeah, just, just to kind of comment on that very, very real. Um, and the crown chakra, which is kind of leading me into some of the things we were going to discuss today. Um, one of the most important things for people to understand right now, at least from the energy that I have received and kind of the guidance from what I believe to be a council from a specific planet as well, which is rare. I am not one of those people that ever does names. I often get skeptical of people that like connect with beings and they have these very specific names because none of them ever tell me their names. They have a frequency. But anyway, um, uh, I believe that these energies are specifically from a place known as Mintaka. But the funny thing is, it's only known as Mintaka to us here on Earth. That's actually not what it's called at all. In fact, but the name Mintaka is a derivative of what it would sound like if we were to utter it as humans. And so that's one of the reasons why humans named it Mintaka, because it's one of the only pieces of the verbiage that we were able to grab onto. And so um, these energies do appear to be coming from Mintaka. And one of the things that they or one of the things that I have been authorized to speak about on a greater level right now is the crown chakra and this the sort of involuntary and also voluntary amounts of control and palpability that is entering the crown chakra specifically at this stage of our journey on earth. It's one of the reasons why we are receiving such a um, heightened round of what we would call medical tyranny is to force the closure or the controlling of the diameter of the crown chakra, at least from the energy body. And so some people that will have the very early opening of that will be subjected to tuning into those recordings instantly and they'll grab onto them, they'll have an experience with it. Um, and what the funny thing is, it almost appears as though, and this is just from my perspective, so forgive me if this is way too far out there, but from, from my perspective, or rather what I've seen is 
the energy of the person that receives that frequency and then disseminates it actually feeds the sort of collective recording. And so within that, their consciousness feeds it. And that's one of those reasons why it's so palpable for us right now. And anyway, I know that was a lot. I will, I will pause there. <laughs> oh, for sure. And this person actually had an implant. They, they, they were, they were saying that they had the implant, um, and they were abducted by reptilians and they were adopted into the galactic federation of worlds so they were saying they had an implant so and they were wow. receiving info through psychic stuff through implant and they were doing remote viewing which i know they're not doing accurate remote viewing because none of the data was accurate what they were saying so and i'm like this person has no connection to the ssp they know nothing about what's going on in this ssp so why are they mixing in information? This doesn't sound, even just listening, it didn't sound right to me. Yeah. And like when I kept scanning them, programming, 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 you cannot have them on your show. Because I scan for AI, I scan for reptilians, I scan for grays, I scan for mind programming, SSP fracture, and right. I scan for any other negative implants, negative beings, before I even will agree to any show. And, and so this is kind of my protective way of keeping my integrity and reputation. And I know we all as humans, we have emotion, we have what we're going through in the physical level, and that can come in through the reading of the scan. But if the person is pure, you know, pure of heart, pure of everything, they come on my show. It's very simplistic. But when I scanned this person, there was there was that photonic holographic mind control inserts that the grays do. And I saw the grays. I saw like, I saw five of them. And I'm like, no, this is, this is just hive mind control. I can't, I can't, and I, I can't go near this person yeah. because of that. So I was, but I had to be respectful towards that person because they are living a human life and they exist. Totally. So I, <laughs> it's like, I'm not attacking anyone. It is a very murky road in the world of, uh, you know, online spirituality, the secret space program and all of those other kind of, uh, you know, fourth, 4D realms, you know, at the moment. It's a, it is a very strange environment. And I think one of the reasons, and this is more of like a generalization, but I, 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 I know that you're seeing this on some level as well. One of the reasons I believe is because we are living in a time in which there are so many legitimately physical occurrences, timelines and realities that are all like, they're like colliding in this crazy way right now that um, for some people, I mean, that is literally their reality. And for others, other people will be viewing theirs from another perspective going, whoa, you know like what's going on and that's literally yeah anyway. yeah and, and some people are obsessed with this this stuff they've had experiences they're like i need to know everything i need to figure it out i need to i need to i'm, I'm beyond the point where i need to i've done all the work i've done the hypnosis regressions i've done the memory retrievals i know what happened to me i know I was controlled to a certain degree with my implants because if i did something out of turn if I did something wrong, I would convulse in seizures and I had no spleets. Oh, wow. So in these, they're Neuralink implants and they're etheric and they're nanotech. So I knew that. But in 2017, I had brain inflammation and the nano gold fiber particles were starting to bleed through, leak out mm -hmm. from these four implants. And I'm like, that's it. They're going. I know they enhance my psychic ability, but I'm they're going. So I did psychic surgery, removed them, and the inflammation started going down and the lesions started going away from the left side of my brain. So I knew, left side, yeah. yeah, and I knew being implanted was wrong. It's like, that's not for me. I had a hard time letting go of these implants because the idea was they enhance my psychic, psychic ability. That's what I was always told on planetary corp on Mars on those bases they make you the it person, they enhance your abilities, they give you downloads, medical info, work training, job training, you de you're dependent on them. Then when I knowing, yeah, yeah, but I'm not dependent on them. I didn't need them because my ability works better without anything implanted. 
can augment this. I don't need nano inside my brain. I don't need etheric implants. So I said, let it go. Let this go. Remove it from your system. Done. I'm fine. My ability works just fine. Being organic human is good. Yeah. You actually seem a lot stronger and a lot more clear now than the version of you that I recall from the 2017 era, because I was also like one of the viewers at that stage that was like, whoa, this is an incredible story. You know what I mean? And it was, no, and like it has been, but definitely I, I think that your, your evidence of the evolution through the consciousness gateways that some people will linger in for an entire chapter of their life. And some people will are meant to remain there. Others will you know, process it, heal from it, take the thing they need to take, throw away a few other things. It's like, now we're going to go do this. And so that's a sign of evolution. Good well, job. the SSP is not the sum of all parts. It's not a badge that I wear proudly as an experience. It's an experience. You learn from it. You process the pain. You process the trauma. You process what good things you learn from those experiences, the good, the bad, and you let it go so you don't carry baggage. Yeah. It's like you know about it, you understand it, you release. Because if you keep obsessing about it, you don't leave room for soul explore, exploration and soul growth in life. You have to move on from that, acknowledge, understand, learn, and move on. Yeah. For other soul growth opportunities. Totally. totally. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. And, and some people, like that person who you were discussing last year, can't move on from it. Oh, they, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> they make that experience to this day. This is my experience. This is what I'm going to keep talking about. Thing is, as multidimensional beings, we have so many different experiences that we can explore and, and talk about and, and share with the world. I have many experiences. So it's not... It's not just one type. There's so many. And I, I'm writing books about all of it. I log it. It's yeah. like the research archive. I log the experiences because what, what, what I learned is these art shifts, they have huge holographic libraries with crystals that's, that, that carry all planetary histories and the universal histories of creation. And that's what's been activated. Totally. Yeah. Th thank you for segueing into that, because that is one of the things that I, I really wanted to discuss with you, because that's one of the sort of, I think that is an example of when an ancestral or a, a dimensional frequency of the self will sort of start resonating with our DNA, because that was a direct discovery for me as well last year. And um, at the time I was working with a healer, her name is Henda Zaguani, and, and she, she teaches people to very effectively travel outside of the body. And for me, it was a thing which I, I can literally see in your eyes. And I know that you are doing a lot of as well that I did just organically at stages of my life, but I never, ever knew how to make it happen. I just did not know. I was like, it would happen. And I'm like, Oh my God, that was amazing. And if I tried to make it happen, it was like, it was like a brick wall or something. And so um, she was one of the beings that really assisted me in moving outside of the physical body. And I believe this was in spring of 2021 through the work that I was doing with her. I actually arrived in, a dome city on a very large, well, I thought it was a cylindrical or like a sliver. It was definitely did not appear like a ship. But for me, I, I don't know that I'm the most expertly observant when in, when in those spaces. I, you know what I mean? I tend to get what was given to me and then I'll just kind of zoom out. But within that space, I actually entered one of those domes and lo and behold, what did I discover in that space? Literally what you said right now, a hall of knowledge, libraries, literal spaces in which energy existed and recordings had been placed from the many beings who lived there and returned there in between life cycles. Not that it's what we would call a pure fourth density spiritual realm. It wasn't. It was very technological and it was very real. But within those spaces, we would live almost entire life cycles. We would practice, I believe, for the things that we are inevitably doing here. And so, at least from what I was shown within these experiences, one of the reasons why we're, we're sort of talking about that now is not only because we're linking in with that version of ourselves that we're existing within those, what we call art ships or realms, 
for a while, I thought it was like a pocket dimension that we would like return to at times, but you could see there was other structures there. And when I went there with her, she went to a separate one. So it was like, there was different realms and places within them. And so one of the reasons why that is more palpable right now for people on the earth plane, at least from the information that I've been given has to do with the reactivation of uh, what would uh, what are essentially pieces of what we call reversal technology meaning what they do is they they siphon life energy and turn it into the anti-life version of energy which degrades the human soul leads to negative ego behaviors it's a literal root form of what we would call earthly evil on some level and so these these reversal technology kind of structures were reactivated they've been actually being reactivated for many years um, but we had a huge reactivation of them, at least the ones in Antarctica, in and around fall of 2021, coinciding with a number of like fake and also real, just a bunch of weird kind of reports and talk about it. It does appear to have actually happened. It was a thing that I, I think myself and other people actually were made aware of and viewed before it actually happened specifically so when it happened when we would know okay yep that was actually real okay and so what what was viewed down there um it is a set of inverted pyramids now the pyramids themselves upon viewing them are actually normal and it's it's actually for for those that are really good with opening up the sort of visual cortex you can literally view it by looking at my left eye i'm not trying to be weird but it's a it's a literal portal everyone has them um, and so people can get their own internalized slideshow of it. But what happened was through through what are essentially timed events that occur on the Earth plane. It's sort of the inevitability that they talked about when they were looking at the looking glass thing. They saw certain things that were going to happen. There's no way they could avoid it. And one of those is the reactivation of the inverted pyramid structures. And so um, what they essentially are is a pyramid on the top and a pyramid on the bottom. And the pyramid on the bottom was actually a walkway. And so what it appeared happened during some of these rituals reactivating this, there was a sacrifice and a number of other things that occurred. But the humans would actually go all the way down this spiral thing to the internal apex of the pyramid. And that point right there was actually an activation. And so the activation chained together with what appeared to be a number of other structures. Some of them are in the Middle East. I know for a fact, one of them, it really looked like it was in Alaska, believe it or not. That was the only one I could actually really sort of grab onto. And I feel, I feel like there's some in Antarctica, as well as places in both the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. Now, the one on the Atlantic side and the Pacific side, when those activated, it appeared as though it also activated these streams of energy that went up to, this is where your kind of knowledge comes in, appeared to be arc ships, which will appear, check this out, I know this is a lot of stuff, thank you for giving me like the time to talk about this, which appear to be visible, check this out, as both underneath the water and also in the atmosphere at the same time, because they are. And so it's like they're underwater and they're also existing in a fourth density space above us. So the reactivation of that reversal technology also started a positive transition as well. Not that it was intended, but it was like turning up the bandwidth. And so some of the energy is going to go into other places. At least that was my observance. And so I know that was a lot. I'll, I will pause there. <laughs> Well, in the Council of Nine, I just had an experience in an intervention by them because I was going through human things that were causing distortions in my frequency field, anger, frustration, even demands and threats. Like just from my own internal perspective, working through them, they're like, you're not managing this properly as a healer. We're, we're intervening and we're going to take you into the crystalline pyramids and the oscillating crystal on top and clean all this out because you're storing this within and it's hurting you. That's what they said to me. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. I am not sleeping well and suffering. So I just let them clear that. And I knew it was the ninth dimension and I knew it was safe. It's not fake imposters. Mm -hmm. I knew it's the real ninth dimensional to 24th dimensional council of nine without assign, assigning Orion this or that. It's not in existence. It's not in Saturn. It's not in Orion. It is ninth dimension, pure, no names, mm -hmm. no specific assignments of places. And there's no nine beings. There's just beings that are of pure light there that are, they're not physical. 
but they can take on semi-corporeal physicality when they interact with you. If they're supposed to interact on a lesson-based thing, which the, the lady, yeah. her name, she called herself Saleya. Mm -hmm. She gave me a name because I do well with name references. That's just me. Um, and But she, she was not fully corporeal. She was 12th dimension on a ninth dimension interacting with me of looking at them learning reflections and those art ships are reflections for us to discover and learn from because they have histories of all yeah. that's been or will be or is to come oh yeah i abs i absolutely agree um i believe that one of the reasons why that is showing up for a lot of us is to specifically help us through a process of healing kind of like you're talking about right now to help us through a process of healing or to break through on some level within our conscious discernment the manner in which we are kind of controlling or allowing ourselves to be like controlled on the planet earth right now which um, and just to kind of back up and comment on what you were saying, I, I, I very much agree with the concept of this council existing and, and not being assigned to, to any specific kind of uh, place or realm or, you know, whatever we would want to, you know, describe it. Um, one of the things that was shown to me very heavily, which, you know, I, I, as a professional in this realm, I always say this just because I say it is so doesn't mean it is. It was just what they gave to me. But what they showed me within that space was that every living being that exists here has access to that counsel, mm -hmm. to that energy, that it is not a privilege. It is a fact of our existence. And one of the things or one of the ways in which it is being misused right now is as a tool of dissemination for public events or things that are occurring within our physical realm of which what i was shown they are not it is a process and it is a healing journey and it is an experiential thing that a connection that they will make for the individual that will pertain to their path and their things and it's it, it was not a a group that seemed to enjoy giving updates of matters within space of beings and things and i could be very wrong on that but um no you're yeah. completely right because this was a spiritual healing intervention I was very low frequency. I was not at my top frequency because I was angry, I was mad, and I was very much in the human 3D muck, if you will, because things happen, you know? And I, I don't say, oh, I'm being attacked, I'm being attacked. No, it's just human stuff, human life that happens. It's part of this world. Yeah. And I was low vibration, I could feel it. And to them, it didn't matter what vibration I was on. They're like, they didn't take me, they didn't abduct me. They said, would you like healing? Would you like to come and heal? Would you like to look at your life reflections? I don't like doing life review. I don't like it. I don't plan to do it on the other side. I don't buy into the Lords of Karma life review. Yeah. To me, that's like, okay, I'm learning what I'm learning and I'm learning, but I wasn't learning enough of it through what I was going the layers of the issues I was going through and it wasn't getting resolved. I, I spent a month on this and it was suffering. I can admit it, it was suffering. Okay. I wasn't getting anywhere on my own and I have a lot of ways of getting around things. I'm a healer, I'm a psychic, but sometimes even the shoemaker who makes his own shoes goes to somebody else to have shoes yeah. made. Definitely. When they we need the help. To. I yeah. think we have to be able to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so they said, would you like help? And it was a spiritual soul intervention for healing and to look at the reflection of what was currently happening in my life to dissolve, to dissolve all of these problems. And they helped by doing the reflection through working with them. It was solved in two days, what I couldn't figure out completely in one month. And that's pure human reality. That's part of being in this 3D world. Um, again, I wasn't being attacked. I wasn't, you know, I was just being frustrated that things yeah. take too long here to manifest, to fix, because I manifest instantly. I'm used to it. Right. But hey, that's okay. So they helped me to clear everything in two days because it was just too much on the human level to handle alone. I'm not an island. I can accept yeah. help. I can welcome help. Yeah. That's so, mean, yeah. yeah. And I welcomed it. Yeah. yeah. 
And that, that's being humble. That's understanding. You can't do everything alone. Totally. To me, that's one of the purest examples of when we will be in pure communication with spirit. And it's like a, this sort of guard will come down and a process will begin. And, and, and yes, it's very 3D and it's very human. And it's like, to me, that's the true example of when you will be in contact with, you know, I also call it by another name, which will be a bit of a misnomer, but the multidimensional higher self counsel that works on behalf of each of us in this life, which probably similar to you and, you know, maybe many others, or maybe not. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I'm the only one, but that was one of the big discoveries that I made at the start of this journey when, you know, when I, I felt like I was actually able to perceive and sort of be in contact with what we would call the higher self, I realized that it was actually a group. And it was a group of what I understood as a group of me that has existed and do currently exist on a number of dimensions who made the choice to be like, we're going to come together for this version of Matthew right now on this earth plane. And that's the thing that each and every one of us has. And, but yeah, I have two of them. One is named Jenea and one is named Miara. One is Pleiadian, one is Andromedan. So it's like, okay. and they're versions of, I know they're living their own lives. In, in in their own frequency they exist real beings in their own frequency but they have a combination of me a little soul aspect of me yeah and i am connected to those soul aspects wherever they are it's on the sixth dimension they're both on the sixth yeah. dimension so but i understand their their own individuals that are aspects of my higher self and yeah. when i need help they come in they advise, they help me to figure things out. They help me to see the future sometimes. They each have their own aspects of what they work with me on. Yeah. And sometimes we just chat. It's a, it's a telepathic chat. Um, if I want to you know, figure something out, I don't just go to my friends all the time because I don't want to burden anybody with what I'm trying to figure out because you don't dump your problems on somebody else. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah no, totally. Yeah. So that's what the higher selves can help with, the multidimensional aspects of us. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that we are, we are living in the lifetime in which we will begin to understand that much of the internal dialogue that we kind of engage in on a daily basis is it wasn't really us within our mind. It was us and them all kind of talking together. But we as humans, we kind of like discern it as, you know, I think I'm... I think I feel this, but it's like, it's this whole exchange that's occurring. And um, at least within the work that I do within the training and the kind of the stuff that we've been doing lately, that that is, I think, one of the most important realizations and internalizations we can make. I think that really bridges the gap for people who do not or have not been taught, and that's most of us on the earth, how to actually tune into the energy of the spiritual realms or the non-physical energies around us. And um, which is, I, which as I know you're aware of, much, much more simple and natural than any of us can make it. <laughs> you know? and, and also, because I work with a lot of people and they're so focused on when is this stuff going to end? You know, the, what's happening? Yeah. I call, let's just call it a global healing crisis and an awakening. We'll call it that. And I'm like, it's going to end in 2025 because psychically I see when it's ending. Has gone through its weird phases and it's supposed to end by 2025. That's thanks for saying that. You won't, you probably won't know this, but that's literally, that's, that's, I, yeah, I've mentioned it maybe once or twice on a thing, but yeah, as well, 2025. Thank you for saying that. That's been my first external confirmation. High five over there. I also agree. <laughs> well, so, and I sure. keep checking. When is it supposed to end? When is it supposed to end? And I'm like 2025 because it's going through its four to five phases. And, I'm, and I, I keep telling everybody who asks me, when is it going to end? How did it start? Where was the beginning? And I've talked, I've said this so many times, I'm not going to go over how it started or its phases. The most important thing that all of its phases 2025 done it has to it has its beginning and has its completion date as they can't yeah. push that on to us forever it has and the end is 2025 yeah i actually i wow that's wild thank you for mentioning that you know seriously because that's been going on with me this whole time and i'm like yeah 2025 but it's like nobody's going to believe it we're going to have to live through it and you know the timelines can shift as exactly. we know exactly and that it could change can. it could shift it could change yeah. see it's not a 
permanent thing. But when I, I check, that's why I check in. Has this changed? Is the date still this? It's like, and when I check in right now, it's 2025. Yeah. Still. But that could change again because timelines, they're not set in stone. They're not stamped. Totally. This is it. It's changeable. That's why if people ask me to do a psychic reading. When will I meet my soulmate? I'm like a year and a half from now, but that could change. And that's like 85% what I see. That's cool I that see. you'll even do that, that you'll even give like a, like a time period. I won't even do time periods anymore. I'm like, well. <laughs> I, I do, I, as a, they, because they're asking. They keep asking yeah. when, when, when. I will give the time period with a caveat that it can change. And this is the percentage I see now, but that can change. That's my moral responsibility yeah, saying it yeah. could change. This is just what I'm viewing in this current window as a psychic yeah. engaging in the field frequency, what's happening to the soul yeah. and the potential they have of meeting somebody else who's compatible with them. That's a snapshot of that reality as I view it with yeah. the range dates of when and the percentage of how much possibility there is for it. It's like taking a picture, a digital picture, yeah. I don't like the picture. I could take another and erase the previous one and replace mm -hmm. it. Time also works that way. It shifts reality and timelines because yeah. there's multiple opportunities for what can happen. So that's just a snapshot of yeah. that highest probability potential, but it could change. Totally. I like the way you put that actually as like the snapshot. I, I do agree very much in the, in the sense that it, it, it will absolutely change. I like that you're willing to give a time frame. I, I for some reason, I'm always afraid. I'll, I'll be like, well, you know, it's really, it's not, it's not really about when it's about what do we need to do right now to create, create that reality? Because I mean, you know, some people are really good at spotting like distance. I think it's probably because I don't use any astrology in any form i'm the most non-astrological psychic that has ever existed but i don't because either I I know, oh my god i know what astrology is but i cannot yeah. chart your astrological chart i don't know how right. to chart totally say yeah i have i i don't know it's like a whole other language to me and so you know i have made a point of not doing future forecasts for people i'm like i tend i will tend to not go past six months maybe a year at the most but I also think that's because um, some of us are very are, are more suited to work with body systems. Some of us are more suited to work with the astral sight, you know, within like, well, this is what I perceive approaching you. And what I've learned is I'm very much the body system version. I'm charting what's happening within the self, you know? Yeah, the self and a little bit out there as yeah. well, because how, they ask me, when will I meet my life partner and what do I need to do it? to do for it to happen? What do I do action wise to make it happen? And I say, this is how you can meet them. This is what it looks like to me, like how you meet them. But they, they also want the window of the when, the when and yeah. the how and what they need to do for it to happen. So we, I try to cover all those bases, but again, there's probabilities and opportunities. Yeah. I admire that. <laughs> there's, there's a life partner, there's the soulmate and there's the twin flame. So there's three possibilities for what you can get and who you can meet. I have a question about that. What do you think about the idea? And, you know, maybe everyone knows this, so they're like, uh, but it seems to me that there's actually multiple versions of each one of those. It's like life partner, you know, twin flame. It's like, there's not just one, there are dozens. And some of them are going to be much more resonant based on, you know, maybe the recent incarnational cycles, but they're, it's, it's like they're, they're everywhere. What do you think about that? Oh, I agree. I mean, the twin flame thing, the twin flame can be your pet. The twin flame can be your brother, your sister, your totally. friend, or yeah. your lover. So twin totally. flame does not apply to just lovers. Um, soulmate is also, there's potential soulmates. Life partner doesn't have to be your soulmate or your twin flame. It can just be the person that you just resonate with on all the qualities that you yeah. like about them. So there's variation in, in what the opportunities and availabilities are. And some people are like, I don't have any of those in this lifetime. I just feel it. And I know it. I'm like, yes, but there's always opportunity to meet somebody that you like and can have as a partner. So don't close yeah. yourself off to opportunities. And some people are just so attached to their twin flames who are with somebody else that they, yeah. they just feel everything. If that person is, if their twin flame is married to somebody, they could 
feel what's going on in that marriage. I'm like, totally, totally. And, and I'm like, you need to distance yourself from what you're picking up your twin flame is doing with somebody yeah. else. You cannot tune in as an antenna. I'm like, you have to release and let go. Totally. And, and yeah. be empowered in your own life. And, and if you want to meet somebody else, you can. You don't have to just stick to the twin flame. You don't have the responsibility. Yeah. Just because they're energetically like this doesn't mean you have to yeah. go totally. there if it's inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I like the way you describe that. Yeah, which, 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 and this is this is me tying it back to the whole Orion thing at, at the mm -hmm. same time. But, but it is actually related within that because one of the one of the frequencies that has been coming forward, at least one of the things that I have been asked to speak on or just kind of convey on a greater level, um, is the level of polarization that is in some cases very very needed for those of us on earth and i was very given a very possibly different perspective on what i mean when i say polarization it is a choice and it is an identity and it is the solidification of our choices and our identity at this stage of our life cycle on earth that has paramount importance for for those of us who chose to activate at this stage of the, stage of the journey and by activate what do i mean i mean come into greater organic contact with the versions of us on the multi-dimensional plane meaning through extraterrestrial experiences through the work through the development of our natural psychic abilities all those things one of the means by which we are going to be enhancing that on a greater level is by polarizing our get this and this is one of the things that kind of tripped me out which is why i was like really you guys want me to talk about this um, in polarizing our gender roles as humans one of the things that has been shown to be fundamentally damaging to the strands of orion dna within the human body has to do or was caused one of the very damaging elements was a dilution of our spirit through what appears to be one of the frequencies coming from layers of uh, reversal technology. And what does re the reversal technology do? That, that frequency, it causes an organic transgender shift or the desire, the energy, the consciousness around it, it causes those strands to separate within the body. And so one of the things that we are going to be talking about us on a greater level in years to come is that we need to make a choice and actually solidify um, your role as a masculine being or your role as a feminine being. And yes, they will, you will, we will be containing both always. It's absolutely part of our journey, but it's almost like they're moving toward the healing of the divine masculine. One of the reasons for that has to do um, with uh, a frequency that seems to be affecting uh, a lot of what the upheaval is happening here on earth. When we talk about, you know, divine masculine feminine as a fundamental split, it's very true, but we're talking mm -hmm. about it more within the layers of the energy body and the ways in which it affects human behavior. I know you're going to say something there. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I, I embody my more divine masculine than my feminine. You could probably read it in the frequency. I may be in a female body and I imbue female attributes feminine like yeah. attributes but i'm very much in the warrior male male yeah. energy almost all the time and people ask me how can you easily interact with men and women and not have any problems talking to men and women how can you go in sessions and just say well your generals hurt your you you know down there i i have no problem i'm like i see in your generals this this and that and i just straight out say it male female does not matter yeah yeah um that to me that is the literal example of when they say polarize your identity it does not mean you know do not change genders it's not necessarily what that means it's polarizing the internalization of our role and for those that have polarized that role you will be existing in both worlds simultaneously what it does do, uh, the actual physical act of the gender switch on Earth does, though, actually damage that element of DNA as well. But it's more of an internal decision that um, that we are making right now. And so one of the, one of the reasons for that happens to be also because of further changes that are going to be coming on the Earth plane. And it's very rare that I ever get a time period, but it's one of the reasons why I chose to reach out to a group of people to be like, hey, will you talk about this with me on a more public level? Um, and that is a specific time period um, that kind of begins with what we know on, on, on Earth as the season of sacrifice. Um, I do not remember exactly when that starts, but it is a, a, a range of dates that I think begins sometime in March. 
and ends, you know, somewhere after that. It's not really about the season of sacrifices here. It's about the window of time that begins at the end of February and continues probably through the end of July. It's a very short period of time. The reason why we need to be made aware of this period of time is because on one level, there is a pre-planned series of events that have been chosen to take place on the earth plane this year that are specifically designed to stop a huge level of awakening that's about to occur and to kind of bring it back all the way to the beginning of our talk here today the specific area in the body that is about to go through a big shift is the crown chakra the crown chakra specifically what's wild is i guarantee you that if whoever sees this you're going to feel your crown chakra when i talk about it um, because it is a thing that everyone right now can tune into and grab onto it's like that the 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 connection with the arc ships and even the connection with the reversal technology the ones in antarctica are very very viewable um they're all online right now because of this change and so um i feel like there was an additional message there but i sort of lost it but anyway, well I'll, you were saying there. that the v this thing that the v is happening that yes, it's changing yes. people for entertainment electrical signals so you were in the email that we were we were yeah. looking through you were saying the v thing that's mm -hmm. a change in people yes absolutely it is creating um a a fundamental shift in the energy of the upper chakras which on the physical body uh within the next year or so you're going to see mass sterilization and a really huge birth rate drop that's going to be our first sign that that was actually what it was but um it creates a restriction and a hijacking of energy that will exist around the upper chakras now i know it does a million other things in the energy body but i operate very much within you know those or in the physical body i operate within the energy body and so um the reason why that that is happening is because we are also experiencing an activation of energy centers at the sides of the head which some people call causal chakras but um, the whole idea is that it is the further hijacking of the naturally activating human frequency. And not many people are aware of this. I've, I'm sure you've heard it, but um, what happens when the causal chakras begin to activate on the human body? We begin the stage of telepathic, non-physical communication. Yes, there are other energy centers that will need to be in alignment for the to work. But right here, when these activate, not only will you be able to send and receive on a greater level, but if your consciousness has already been dampened through the scheduled closing of the crown, through the changing of the chemical makeup in the body, through the alteration of your DNA, you will not be influencing, you will be receiving on a much greater level. And that's when the sort of human autopilot concept comes in, which does appear to be a reality on a timeline very close to us. There's a stage of kind of autopilot and consciousness hijacking. We're already seeing it, but um, there's a much greater level of it. Coming. Yeah, I mean, there's just some people are don't have the stamina to wake up and see what's going on. Yeah, and They live in their own identity and their own societal means of existence because they can't understand the greater cosmic evolution of the soul frequency they're not awake enough there and those ones that do the v some are very highly awake and attuned even if they took the v it's not going to impact them in any way because yeah. they don't let that, that is also be. true that is also true it's not a death sentence for everybody no but, uh, you know. I, I know several <laughs> started, you know, yeah. sev several gifted psychics healers who are great as people and this thing hasn't changed them just because they got it didn't change them on a fundamental level they're healthy they're happy they're doing well and other people who you know don't think about protecting themselves health wise it impacts them because they have a negative outlook this is just an escape to them to get freedom that's not real freedom totally. though it's just a ticket yeah. you buy for a few months of freedom but this is not freedom so it's like you have to adjust your mental focus on what's important to you in life why you're doing it if you're getting that for that reason for freedom or you're getting it just because to protect yourself healthily think about why you're doing this thing why are you getting it yeah oh man i uh, i i i completely agree or not getting it yeah, what, what you what's <laughs> what's your uh rationale for not doing it because hmm. there's both there's polarity on both sides oh, totally totally and i don't I can, take sides i'm very neutral totally. i'm like 
if you do whatever you need to to feel safe and comfortable so i don't advocate it but yet i don't deny it either mm -hmm. it is what it is for every individual that chooses to experience either doing it or not doing it for their own good reasons yeah the soul's path the timeline choice exactly yeah and you were also mentioning um the black league and oh yeah oh lord okay that's that's always that's a that's a that will be a cringe moment for all of us but um um a, a, or a a moment of truth that has been one of the the primary kind of um see it is it's awkward for me to talk about it that has been one of the primary soul frequencies for me incarnation after incarnation after incarnation um from both the positive side and also the negative side and so um uh it has been a thing that i am also authorized to talk about but it's very difficult to talk about it's like i feel emotional about it and i feel conflicted talking about it every single time but here's what i can tell you um, there are many of us on the earth plane right now that are operating within a very legitimate frequency uh, given to us by the realm of Orion through many incarnations in that. It's one of the strands of knowledge and ability and just consciousness that will awaken within us. It is also very easily hijacked. It is very, very easily hijacked. And some of us right now, myself uh, and others, um, we're part of the beings that in other life cycles created those frequencies and put them together and actually put them within the bodies of the people who are now experiencing the after effects many lifetimes later. And so one of the things that's happening is that uh, elements or soul aspects of Black League are now reaching out to correct and rebalance those strands of energy. And one of the things that I have been authorized to speak about is that uh, one of the things that's happening with the elitist energy on earth right now um, is being kind of flown under a false flag of Orion in the Black League. And what it does appear to be is an additional, uh, uh, it's like a, an, an additional military group that is both physical and non-physical working right alongside human beings. The problem is they are not at all who they claim to be. And so one of the other things we're gonna be speaking about in greater length in the future is just understanding the energy of Orion and Black League and how there are strands of DNA that awaken in us at certain times in our life and will fundamentally alter our path. For me, my experience of that began in 2017 when I transitioned out of my previous life cycle into what I am doing now. For me, that was shown as the activation of that energy strand within my body. And it, it sort of led me on a very, very wild ride. So it's a, it's a very deeply polarizing thing, but um, it's important for, for people to know that when they talk about the Orion group right now, when you hear a lot of the updates and the people that are like, and the Orion group did this and the Orion group's doing that. And it's these, these reptilians from Orion. Um, at least what has been shown to me right now is that the first thing we need to know is that's not who it is. In many cases, yes, there's a million factions and a million groups, but for a lot of us right now, the energy that we're encountering within our soul group is under a false flag of a whole other group of beings. Um, one of the words that was given to me when I checked into it is also, it's a hard one for me to say, which means that either I shouldn't say it or I really should say it. Um, it was called, I see, I can barely even say it. Whoa, okay. Kaim chimera 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 and so i do not know exactly what that is but it appears to be um something that is rising up there's almost there was like an energy graph it was something that is also affecting and sort of working alongside many humans right now that are kind of uh, disseminating and speaking and um anyway whew, i even feel it's like this heat and energy comes in just speaking on it so well, what I know about chimeras is that in Atlantean times, when they were genetically manipulating beings and animals and humans, they would breed animals with humans. They would breed ET DNA with human DNA. The Anunnaki did it, the Greys did it, the reptilians did it, and other species did it. This is what caused our world to fall from higher D to lower D, where we are now. And it's for us to learn not to do that. And the yeah. V is doing it. And yeah. Neuralink, you know, the pr proposal to go meta, mm -hmm. to go yes. meta and to go chipped. That's it. And to go implanted. That's part of that chimera agenda. That's it, literally. <laughs> it's more yeah. than the word 
the mark of the beast. It's much yeah. more to the understanding of what it is, or simply put transhumanism. You can put any label you want on it, but it's the same thing described in many different ways. Yeah. Oh man, I, I agree so much. One of the reasons why it is difficult to speak upon it, at least what I've been shown is that within what we would call the Atlantean time period, um, which here, here is, here is the very cool thing. I discovered your at, at Atlantis remote viewing video organically right around the period when I was also like Atlantis, Atlantis, which I, which was very, very recent as I recall, or at least I discovered it very recently. And so, um, but a lot of that experience was from that realm, wherein those now people like myself, that's why it's awkward to talk about, at least through the lifetimes that I have been privileged enough to view in great detail now, we created it. We were putting it in people. Last time around, we thought this was the greatest thing that we could do that was necessary for the, the, you know, the evolution of our being and our species. At least that was my understanding in the life cycles in which we were doing it. And so, um, you know, going back to the energy of the Black League, it is both positive and negative polarization. And that's also going back to the energy of Orion and Mintaka. And I'm sorry to instantly segue back in there, but it's one of the other points that I was meant to speak on. Um, for those that choose to tune into it, for those that would like to grab onto the element of themselves that exists in this realm, um, the first thing you need to understand is that it is very polarized. Now, their version of polarization is different than ours. It is extreme darkness and extreme light existing right alongside each other in the now moment. In that realm, you make a choice as to which one you want to be, and all choices are accepted. You exist right alongside the evil, and you eat lunch with it every single day, and the light does the same thing, and there's no difference. When we come to Earth, that is where they act out through the surrogate energy what we do here. And so when we connect with the energy of Nantaka, when we connect with the energy of Orion, we're connecting with a very polarized realm. So it's important to have your intention set properly. It is important to be in a state of where, you know, your emotions are firm and you're doing well. And so um, upon connecting with that, many of us are going to be guided or sort of move into what looks like libraries, access to what we would call those arc ships. And for many of us right now, it's kind of a scheduled thing. And anyway, I feel myself getting pulled off the frequency. So I will, I will pause there. But well, polarity in in what you exist light and dark when I was with the Council of Nine, Salea, I'll just give it that those names because yeah. City of Light, I was in a City of Light, I was in the Crystalline Pyramids, I, I visited several mm -hmm. sections of that ninth dimensional realm, and I was shown the future of Earth and what's currently happening. So we're 70% darkness, 30% light, and New Earth is about 50% darkness and 50% light, 50-50 yin-yang existence. Yeah. That's New Earth, it's not 100% light. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 50 50 Thank you. equal value. Yep. In value, I mean equal, equal. Yep. There's night and Absolutely. there's day. There's darkness and there's light. That's how planets exist. That's how physicality exists. Yeah. New Earth, fifth density is still a physicality. It just has less problems than what we had now. Totally. There's still going to be life situations to deal with. There's just not going to be barrage of dark, 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 dark. It's going to ease up on the density factor. Yeah. Less issues, quicker manifestation, healthier beings, cleaner earth. That's 5D. Yeah. It's still a physical reality. There's a 50-50 light and dark to balance everything. Wow. It's the yin and the yang. Because that's the frequency of proper balance going up from three to four to five. That's what I was shown because I didn't know the percentages and I don't check in into the percentages of, of how much darkness and how much light. But she's, Salaya said that's important for you to understand what's going on now and what's going to be happening going forward yeah. in this transition, in this transformation. Because 5D Earth is not just us popping into it, it's us working towards going there and literally terraforming this planet back to its organic states. Yeah, dude, oh man, I totally agree. Thank you for Thank you for saying it in that way. That has been a message that I have also received and been sort of softly 
you know, giving in my own way, but ab, ab, absolutely, I, I, I very much agree. And um, just one more thing before I move off of the Orion frequency, as I like remember the other bullet points that I was going to mention, um, I was given a contact protocol that people can use in their own meditations to sort of connect with or to help you create a more tangible connection with the energy of Orion. And it was actually shown to me in a very, a very impermanent way because it's a very impermanent connection. It is one that you must cultivate and hold on to. And so um, the, the mechanism of it is something that has taken a huge, huge role in my life lately as a uh, professional psychic. And it is through the candle. Candle so, gazing. Absolutely. And here's the reason why this is changing. This is one of the reasons why this is changing because the natural portal system within the layout of the human energy body is activating on a much greater level. The energy of the candle right now is going to help everybody that uses it naturally open that portal within your body. And so it's even very specific where one of the portals is, is not only the crown, but within the third eye, there's a secondary opening kind of usually underneath or to one of the sides of it. One of the reasons why the candle will help is because in order for us to connect in or to have a more what we might call discernible layer of, you know, like connection with those frequencies, we need to be able to dilate. And so that dilation process will happen with the sun, but as we know, it'll burn a hole in your eyes and you'll go blind. You can do it with the candle. And what you'll be doing is training your energy body to hold that portal connection open by holding that portal connection open. And I'm, I, I can tell you have encountered such a thing. You'll eventually be able to go through it. You will go through it and you will find another place, which was one of the ways that I initially got to this realm to begin with, which hopefully it's not too much of a tangent, but I actually discovered this whole thing here through one of the people within our training group. I have like a training group of people, me and my wife work with this whole like group of people who are also doing very similar work. And in this case, it was a, a person in our group who is already at such a shocking level and they gave me a healing. She gave me a healing and just, and I will say her name because I pray people find her. Her name is Sophia Forbes and she's incredible. And she gave me a healing. And within that healing, I was taken to that Orion realm. It was so tangible that later on through the candle, I was able to instantly return to it to the extent that upon returning there and finding the libraries and the connections with the arc ships and all of that, we were told, and I say we, because honestly, I think there's other beings there that that's the way we will exit and enter. And so anyway, I'll pause there. I know that's an endless thing for me. <laughs> well, the, the candle gazing, that's the first thing I was taught in psychic development connect through the candle it's a portal system it opens up your third eye your uh, crown chakra your solar plexus yep. and your heart connection and then candle magic because you can manifest with candles and colors and frequencies Act, active manifestation with candles totally because i'm a lightweight wiccan practitioner level three <laughs> priestess yeah. certified yeah. Candle magic, candle gazing, that's the first thing you learn in magic mm -hmm. and in psychic development. So this I've known from the beginning. That's how I was taught to do it. But now it's an, it's an even bigger activation frequency. Yep. Dial it in. It dials you in. You watch the flame and the flame yep. goes up, up, up. It, energy vibration shifts. It shifts you out of the 3D body and as a silver cord tether. Yep. And that's how you learn to astral travel. You can do it through really. candle magic. You can, you can train yourself to unfocus your human gaze through the candle or the mirror, the black mirror. Oh, yeah. There's also the black mirror. And you, your, your mind literally shifts with the third eye and the crown chakra, yeah. and it goes somewhere else. Totally. Oh, man, that is literally it. And the cool thing is anybody can do it, which I believe this is the reason why it was given to us, because it does not require a level of training or knowledge. It is a static object. And for a lot of us on the earth plane that are getting hit by all the frequencies and, you know, the forced medical treatments and all that wild stuff, we're coming to the stage. And I think especially this year in which people are going to need a physical, very simplistic, very like, OK, how do I do this? You know? fix your gaze upon this and allow the connection to begin. And um, at the risk of going on and on and on, I'm so sorry, but it also corresponds with uh, a reactivation or almost a greater availability of what some people, I, I, 
have called the the sort of the sort of gateways or the um, like natural portals that will exist in the solar system. And I think one of the things that I was, you know, shown, not that I have been authorized to talk about. So this is a belief, not a thing that has been given to me, but um, there are, a, there's a series of them that are activating at least three that I have been made aware of that um, they have been talked about through all sorts of media and science fiction on our planet. And they are literally real. Um, and it was almost like recently as I viewed them, it was like the process of opening and they were shown, they were shown as literal fetuses that were sort of growing and coming back and forming into those. One of those is near, it's not really near it, but it's within the vicinity of the Orion system. One of those appeared to be somewhere within Jupiter's range, if we want to call it Jupiter. I think it was Jupiter. I don't know if that's really what it was. Um, and then there's another one which... For some reason, I have just got pulled out of my brain. Maybe that means it was either not real or I wasn't supposed to talk about it. Because I was like, like, you know, when you're right about to say it with name and it's all. Yep. Not authorized to say it just yet. Well, okay, yeah. cool. Anyway, yeah. That's the interesting thing. When that comes in, it's like, you'll yeah, just feel you, roll through. And so. You have to honor that. If it pulls you back, if spirit source or whatever that info, wherever right. that info is coming from, it asks you to pull back. Maybe it's not now to disclose, maybe later, maybe never, but you respect it because you don't go against energy, against yeah. frequency. What's yeah. meant to be known now will be known now. If it's meant to be known later, it will be, or if it's not meant to be known, it's not going to be. You you just pull out of it and you switch some something else. Same thing happens to people in hypnosis. When you mm -hmm. are exploring their memories or doing memory retrieval, um, some, some pockets of memory, some po pockets of consciousness you can go into and explore and some you just can't, not now, because yeah. there's trauma, there's pain, there's blockages, there's booby traps that need to be cleared oh, yeah. and healed before you access what's behind door number one or two or three or what's behind the mirror yeah. or what's behind the candle gazing. People even use candle gazing for focusing your ability to open the mm -hmm. third eye and the crown. You just meditate by looking at the candle and the gaze just goes sort of blurs and you, there's just the light of the candle and the frequency totally. because fire is a tool for meditation. I am. Some people can touch fire without being burnt. Some people can walk on the coals and they, they're not burnt because they've trained to work with the element of fire. Totally. Like some people Actually. won't draw in water because they've learned how to, the buoyancy of air and water combined together through elemental alchemy yeah. and they'll just float on water. Totally. They'll never sink. Yep. It's all elements. That's literally real. I mean, literally real. And you, you've probably never heard me say this, but one of the weird elements of my story was that during this kind of awakening process for me very, very early on, um, when I was literally losing my mind in the year of 2015, literally talking to animals and wandering around in this weird dissociated days, there, there was a night where I was in, in the shower kind of freaking out and I was doing this sort of autistic kind of stimming thing. And I was going like this, just kind of like tripping out and a literal flame erupted in my left hand. And mm -hmm. I felt it, I smelled it, I tasted it. And it started again when I, I was just go, I was going like this for some reason. I was in the shower with my hands up, just like, you know how when you're in that crazy state, you're just always tripping about something. And I was literally crying about something like, and this literal flame erupted in my hand. It was, it was blue and there was a little white wisp on the top of it. And on the second time that it happened, get this, I got scared and it never happened again. I actually got scared of it and I felt ashamed and I was like, Oh God, nothing to be ashamed of. And it's no right? ability. Right. I think for me, that was an element of some maybe past life energy or another piece that was like, you shouldn't do that. Like I, I, I was not authorized or like an egoic element because I noticed as soon as I had that feeling, it went away and I've had a lot of energy since, but there's never been a flame since that. So yeah. who knows why. Yeah, same with, with the ability to bend metals and objects. I only was able to do it once because I was being yeah. trained as a Native American shaman. I did three years of that. And as right. it's like, I was able to do it once during the training session. I was just thinking about it. 
And I had yeah. to think hard to bend it because you can't cheat and do it with your hands. It was spoon bending sculpture. Mm -hmm. It was like twisting with my mind twisting and I was able to do it. I still have the thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's in my spiritual room. The thing is, it gave me such a mind brain. As yeah. great as it was doing it with the mind, it takes a focus to practice to start learning learning it and i was like uh every time i try it it just gives me a migraine here and at the back of my skull i'm like that's not what i'm meant to do in a permanent organic layer that's not the ability that i need to engage in yeah. it was fun learning how to do it and understanding the process it even has a specific name that's flown out of my head right now where yeah. you can bend objects with your mind Telekinesis. Yes, telekinesis. Yeah, I know, telekinesis no? or something similar to it. Yes. Something, yeah, one of those. Yeah. Telekine yeah, I think, or telekinesis is lifting things off the ground. Something like that. It's something, one of the. Yeah, there's tele something or others. You know, like yeah, there. pyrokinesis, telekinesis, but this this is like bending yeah. objects, literally changing the molecules in the object to bend it, and it's easier to bend metal because it's malleable. Uh, I was I did it once. It was a trippy experience, but I never want to repeat it again because it's not an ability that I need. But you know it's possible. It's possible very you much. Know, just like you no, know it's possible. Just yeah. like when I lit that candle, I was able to raise the fire energy higher by just yep. doing this, not touching it, but from afar, just doing this with my hands and watching it. I was like, whoop, flame goes up, then water having a, a glass of water and raising the molecules to make the bubbles go boop, 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 boop. Uh, I was trained to do that as a shaman to modify the elements. It's, yeah. it, it's natural alchemical elemental modification. We all can do it. I did it with practice because yeah. I wasn't natural at it. Then I went into the magic and it became easier to do that. But it's not like I go around manipulating water, air, fire, and all the other elements in existence. Yeah. I don't need to. It's my psychic ability totally. that is what I work with the most in the healing ability. And I'm stronger in those frequencies. So I know what I'm better at and what not so much. And I'm, I'm good with it. Yeah. Um, I feel you. But so, you know that it's real. You oh, know it's what real because you I can think, modify it. Yeah. That's also a sign that you have. Yeah, oh, so sometimes it's so hard to say the word in integrated those uh, frequencies because it's like it will become a part of you. Whereas in the beginning, it's like yeah, I'll be working with this and like the rawness of the elemental energy. And at least in my experience, you'll know when you have internalized it because it's not a thing that you will consciously do. It's not a parlor trick. It's a piece of you, and it's the thing that kind of is echoed through the work that you do, or the healing, or the manner in which you you know like connect with spirit, or all, all of those things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. And sometimes go. I do implant removal and I need to disintegrate. I need to modify. I need to take yeah. apart parts, hot, cold, mm -hmm. laser heat, extreme heat or hot, cold or one or the other. It's interchangeable energy frequencies. Sometimes people feel it. Sometimes they don't. But I feel it when I do it, when I work on them, because I'm working on the physical body. I'm working on the higher dimensional aspects and the energies of everything that is within and out there to remove these implants. I don't work on one frequency. It's several things that happens. I'm attuned to their body, not to hurt them, because sometimes removing implants, if you hit them with too much of this or not enough of that with the energy that you're unraveling the implant. Today, I was unraveling from muscle and ligaments within shoulders and arms and i had to untangle that that gray frequency it was silver goop water goop I had to untangle it very palpable as you talk about yeah, it That's I had to, wild. thank you i had yeah, to yeah. untangle then i had to remove it then i had to work on the inflammation for it to go down in the physical body after the entanglement and the removal then take yeah. care of the human body once the implant was gone yeah Whoa. And I didn't finish removing an implant. We ran out of time. So I shrank it down to its lowest common denominator. I sealed it in protective yep. energy so it can't hurt the person. But I will need to go back in to remove it because it was large. Went from this to this. 
Wow. And I and and they what what do you mean you can't remove it now? I'm like I'm sorry. It's a two part job because yeah. you have to first of all when I go in next time, I have to unravel its energy, the electrical charge it holds, then remove the actual implant from the body. Yeah. Because it's it, and. I did the best I could. I shrank it. I sealed it so it doesn't interfere with them, doesn't cause physical yeah. pain as much as possible, and doesn't interfere Contain with their, their yeah. psychic ability to open the third eye. That's a very real process. As a person who does a very similar type of work, absolutely, that is a very real process. There are fields of uh, containment. There's fields of suppression. Um, in many cases, it's a very visceral thing, at least within the work that I do, most commonly identify implantation within the meridian system mm -hmm. of all else within the body. Not to say that it does not show up in other areas, because it does, but the meridians, at least from my perspective, are the most immediate avenue toward influencing a number of systems in the body, much more effectively than your chakras. Those are more mm -hmm. uh, over, overarching kind of cyclical cycles of purpose and emotion and all that. But which also can be heavily implanted, but the meridian system, at least for me, that that is, you know, for those of us that are really working, you know, within that realm, I believe m many of us, even if we don't know it, we're working with within the uh, meridian pathways. Yeah, well, and yeah. these things were obvious. It was between the shoulders, the arms, and the wrist on both. Yeah. Left totally. and right side, and it was like smack in the middle of the chest area, like. Phew. And I was like, oh boy, this is, uh, they had a two hour healing session. But they also had some questions. So it was like, I'm using this as an example, because sometimes the person wants the, something gone immediately. But if you've been doing healing work and removing complicated implants, because they like it had the liquid, it had silver liquid, and it had black liquid on the left side. The right side only had the silver. There's also fibers. And it was interwoven between their muscles and their ligaments. It's like unravel, take apart, dissolve, heal yeah. the inflammation, because you can't leave the body, just leave inflammation afterwards. You have to heal what the implant was creating problems for afterwards. Yeah. And then I contained as much as I could of the chest one, because it was big. And it's a different type of implant. It's all energetic, but it was yep. different from what was in the arms and the hands and the wrists it was yeah, very yeah. different it was a dark massive black energy so i was like sphere of you know energy so yeah. i contained it i sealed it so because i shrunk it so i had to contain it and seal it so it doesn't grow back into what it was before and then okay. next time around come back unravel the energy of it and totally dissolve it and remove it and heal that chest area yeah it's what do you what do you think it was doing to the person? Like, what was the symptomology? What, what have they, what uh, it, they it, it was to cause physical pain and comfortable chest pain. It was to yeah. block their third eye and to block them from higher spiritual growth and evolution. Both implants had that intention. The, the ones here were to create pain, inflammation, and disconnect there. This was to create incredible chest pain, yeah, not allow them to not allow totally. them to sing at full range and That's capacity cardium and lung totally yeah yeah and to block this as well Whoa. so i still have work to finish and sometimes this can happen mm. it shocks the person that it can't be removed all at once i said i'm sorry this is a three-step process so i've i've done the this stuff because that the, it was causing i could see the lumps of inflammation on the physical body i could like yeah. see it so that had to be taken care of because it's in both sides. Um, so it was, it was, I'd call these complicated implants for this totally. round. Um, and it had to be done in stages because there's too yeah. many. Sometimes you don't know what you're going in to look at until you scan the person. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you and, think, oh yeah, like we're gonna clear this and clear that. Then you get in there, it's like, whoa, and now we're actually going over here and there's a whole other thing. And well, yeah, there's a sigil in your body. How did he, that get Yeah, and, uh, and I never say so much of this or so much of that. I'm like, it depends on what's in your body and what's in your soul field. Because sometimes these things are not in the body. They're energetically outside of the body, hanging out in the soul field could yep. be the chakras, the meridians, or wrapped around something physically in the body as energy. Yeah. And you have to unravel, you have to dissolve, and then you have to heal the 
physical part that it was attached to. Make sure all the particulates around the thing are also removed. If it's like leaking, seeping something, yeah, all of it has to be gathered up. So it's it's, it's quite interesting, and we to talk on and on about that, but. <laughs> I'm, no, I, I feel you. It is a very interesting area that not that many people will be able to really like, you know, know exactly what you're talking about and sort of, you know, experience it in the same way. Totally. I feel you. Man. And, and we were also, you and I, discussing the concept of Orion Council of Nine. I don't think, I don't think that it's pure evil or pure light. I'm very neutral about it. What, what do you think? Um, well, I can tell you what I've been shown which I also choose to believe not that you can't be shown the wrong thing and grab onto that. Cause we certainly can. Yeah. Um, but what, what, what I was shown is that it is, a, it is highly, highly polarized on both sides and it is very, very much dependent upon the individual's path, their makeup um, and what their, their, their sort of choices are dictating. So for some people, it's going to be an inherently negative energy that is perceived negatively. For other people, it's, it's going to be a healing guiding force. I would say the one thing that I, I really do adhere to when it comes to the idea of the sort of soul councils, because I know, you know, maybe after this life cycle, we get like a, you know, like, here's what was really going on, you guys. And so maybe I'll, I will edit this later when new information shows up. But I believe that one of the things we need to know is that everyone has that counsel. Every living being has it. And it's a connection that is native to each of us. And so for some of us, the concept of that is going to be a very negative thing. Now, do I believe that there is a council of nine on Orion that's calling the shots and oppressing us here on Earth? You know, it's entirely possible, but it does not appear to me as that being one of the functions of what these groups do, almost as if, and this, I know maybe you've had this encounter, um, I think it's a thing that'll happen when you work with Akashic field energy, you will think that, you know, there's all these pertinent things going on on earth, and when you go in there, it does not even register. It's like, oh, really? That's not there? So-and-so is not there? None of these things are there? And that's because it's quite literally irrelevant, and mm -hmm. so... Um, I do not believe that the count, the Orion Council of Nine is, is, you know, disclosing disclosure matters to humans right now. I do not believe that is a fundamental aspect of that, but I think that a lot of people are going to be tuning into a number of other councils and groups of beings. One of the other things we're going to discover, and I'm sure you've encountered this as well, is that in many cases when we do actually grab onto what we will perceive as the energy of a being, you're grabbing onto actually their council and their energies and their lifetimes and their sort of tribes and so it's not like you're even grabbing one singular identity anymore it's collective and which is also part of what happens when we go into fourth density but you know i i think we're at the stage where we know enough to know we know nothing <laughs> you know? exactly we know enough to know we know there's a thing you know but anyway yeah there's always room to explore concepts i don't like to put labels on things um because when i posted my experience with the council of nine I was suddenly a comment popped up, but it, there's no council of nine. It's called the collective collective of nine or the Saturn council of five. There's a, there is a council of five that's associated with Saturn. There's a million of them. <laughs> you know what I mean, but that's one of our discoveries. We're but like, to me, yeah, yeah, to me, it doesn't read as the council of nine. What I connect it to is a council of vibrational of ninth dimension to the 12th. And I called it the council of nine and it's pure, what it's purely designed to do. It's a council of ninth dimension yeah. and up. It's a frequency. I completely, I completely agree. It's cool that you went from, it's cool that you had a number age. For me, it was nine to 13. And it was like, okay, maybe that's as far as my, you know, consciousness was given access to. Because I've heard other people talk about it. And there was like a 15th gate and this gate and that gate. And I was like, I was given nine through 13. And so um, it's interesting to hear that there is somewhat of a quantification, which could, which could be a dimensional range. It totally makes sense. Um, and the Council of Nine that I experienced, maybe it's not the same Council of Nine that Gene Roddenberry got Star Trek from. Oh, did he? Did he get it? Is that? Yeah, that yeah. well, the, the, the story has it that Gene Roddenberry went and, and communed with a group of people who were channeling, channeling the Council of Nine, and he got connected vibrationally to that council. 
and they gave him Star Trek as disclosure for the future of where mankind is heading eventually. So, you know, and people like, when I say Council of Nine, I'm not saying it's the same Council of Nine that he was connected to because the vibration could have been different. I wasn't I born yet when that happened. So I connected to the pure ninth level dimension of frequency into the 12th with Saleya. And that council going of ninth dimension to the 24th. And they did tell me there's other councils even above that. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. So it's like people say, no, no, no. Council of nine no longer exists. It's a collective of nine. Or if it's the, 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 uh, the, the Saturn Council of Five, I'm like, to me, these labels are just historical aspects of unity and what was in creation or still is. It doesn't mean it's the same council that I connected to. Mm. Oh, man, I totally agree. For the record, it does feel like Gene Roddenberry was in contact with a collective frequency. Not that I would be, you know, a person that would be able to discern that, but I honestly believe that a lot of these people's consciousness are reachable. Um, and you can, and it might sound so cheesy to you, you can literally ask them straight up. You can mm -hmm. ask the energy and be like, okay, can you tell me about the energy? And it's literally there as I talk about it. And so to me, I would say he probably did. It feels as though... Uh, If it was, it's not a, mm, it's not the one that's being shared through the current colloquialisms on planet Earth. I can tell you that much. It's not the Saturn Council. It's to me an example of one of many frequencies that are accessible to humans when they will reach a certain stage and you'll get knowledge, you'll get future stuff. Um, yeah, anyway, those, those energies will definitely talk with you so yeah and again people are like asking me which council of nine did you reach i'm like i reached the ninth dimensional council of nine beings there's more than nine beings in that council they go from ninth dimension to the 24th they're pure light beings in non-corporeal form that could sort of take corporeal form to interact with you and the mm -hmm. environments can change it's all energy frequency they yeah. can make anything appear as an environment to yes. make you comfortable. So this is what I was sharing through the little presentation of that experience of what I was seeing when in that energy of the ninth dimension and a bit of the 12th. So it's like for me, it's just it was easy to call it the Council of Nine because that's yeah. it felt like a benevolent Council of Nine from the yeah. ninth dimension and up. Because um, of it. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, and it wasn't the Orion Council of Nine, because that's a total right. different locality in a physical dimension. They yeah. don't say they're here. They told me they were created to protect the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy from a specific race of Anunnaki that are winged that wanted to terraform the physical planets in lower density gravity. So they could yeah. fly and surface walkers can walk on this planet. That's the that's why they came together to create that particular council. But then it evolved into something else. Totally. Oh man, I absolutely agree with you on that. Um, and I guess the 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 only other thing I will add to it for anyone who will find this recording in the annals of time, it is something that is accessible to all humans at this stage of the journey. Um, and for some people, I think, who knows, it might even appear as a council of five, it might be two, it might be one, we, it doesn't really matter. I think the fundamental truth is that we are at the stage of our human experience on Earth, especially this year in which those frequencies are accessible to all. And so when, you know, those of you that are watching this will, you know, believe that the only truth can be disseminated through highly placed individuals that are in constant contact with a series of beings that give them key disclosures for humanity, take heart. You now have the ability to connect in your very own way. And I think when I look back on the sort of the, the guidance that I have received from the energy of Orion in my own journey and the work that I am doing, the fundamentals of it, um, you know, ask us to create our own version of everything. That is where the real power comes in. It's your version, your modality, your frequency, your counsel, your, you know, soul, whatever you want to call it. And so it's something that's available to all at this mm -hmm. stage. Yeah. I mean, I didn't ask to connect with the Council of Nine. I didn't ask for an intervention. They offered to help. 
and I scanned them to make sure they're not imposters. You know, I did my usual scan. Everything came back good, not tricking me, not infiltrating me, not wanting to change me, just help with my clarity of my consciousness a little bit. Yeah. So I'm not angry, I'm not frustrated, I'm not threatening anyone, and I'm not demanding things. I'm doing it, they said, you're a diplomat. You've been a diplomat in past lives. Use the diplomacy skills that you know. Use it now in your 3D life. Wow. It's funny that you said the word diplomat. Sorry to instantly interrupt you, but one of the, it's just funny that you say that because one of the, oh man, this, 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 this might be a fun diversion, but one of the things that I have just view within you, and I know you've had all sorts of journeys out there, is very much like an ambassador and a diplomatic energy, an uh, ambassador of worlds. And the crazy thing is that, that that was the first recognition that I had with your work because it, I was like, wow, that's a timeline that we both shared. And it's literally a thing that we're actually also building right now for a later journey in this lifetime. But that, that's a literally real thing. So it's, it's cool to see the telepathic fragments of my knowledge of you come through in, in your, like the language and the things that you talk about. It's really cool. And, and the lesson in this lifetime, lifetime is to stay humble and stay true to yourself, to my own experiences, not to copy what other people are doing as fads and what they claim as experiences or disclosing whatever their highway is, whatever their responsibility is on their channels, that's theirs. I don't mimic, I don't repeat. What, what's my experience is what's my experience. Sometimes I will report on things yeah. that are important that I think need to be touched on. But that's just one thing I do. I do healing, I do experiential things. I invite people to talk on my show I'm neutral, I'm open minded, and I don't put labels because, and I don't name people's names now. I'm, I've, I've learned stay humble, stay true yeah. to, to discernment, stay true to disclosure, stay and be true to oneself and kind to others in, in not engaging in political agendas of what's trying to fracture these communities. He said this, they said that, this is what it is. There's no right and wrong what people are experiencing. It's their journey. I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, thank you. You have remained authentic this, this whole time. So, well, yeah. And there's temptations not to, because you can get more views, you can get more subscribers, you can get more money. It's not about that. It's, it's to make sure don't fall for the demiurge of the brainwashing. That's, oh, that's something else that happens. Demi urge of the brainwashing, I love that. Yeah, yeah, the demi urge of the brainwashing <laughs> and yeah. the egotistical, political, I want to be famous, I want to be a superstar. Oh, totally. oh, thank you, totally. Some of us made the choice to be real over being famous. Well, I value those beings, you know. And, and people who are famous and rich and have money, some of them don't have soul happiness because they're chasing something that's, zero emptiness with a lot of clout and collateral behind it but emotionally it's this it's a zero because they're not being authentic to themselves and and to what they present in reality it's not real it's not the real version of themselves of what they could be yeah so it's it's like if i'm inauthentic i hurt physically and emotionally if i right? lie oh. i hurt physically and emotionally because right? the polarity oh, is ugh. Totally. Gross. So thank you for saying that. I have some <laughs> I have very yeah, it's like you ha you will have to be authentic at this version of your journey, otherwise life doesn't work anymore. That has literally been my reality. If I try to hide or otherwise kind of guard like what I am or who I am, it's like something instantly goes, you know, the more boldly I've conveyed it, the better we've done. In this weird way, it's like something, you know, continues to kind of, you know, just grow and change and um uh, yeah, anyway. it's, being, it's being authentic to self it's being humble it's staying your true self because if you diverge where you don't belong energetically it it can be very painful on the physical level of existence because the energy is just mucky the energy is low it can be and sometimes people can feel low they could feel high they could go through cycles of things and that's okay that's 3d life too i don't 
I don't judge what people are going through, what they experience, because they're that's their journey of what they might need to know, what they might need to learn and experience. It's all experiential, no right and wrong. Yeah. I don't label people because when you label, you go to the ego, you go to the somewhere else that's not your lane sometimes, or making assumptions about people or things. Like I can assume something, but that's not exactly what it was or even close. Yeah. Man, so, I feel you. I feel you. As a remote viewer, I've been taught leave all assumption and bias, leave yeah, it all right? behind, leave it at the door. When you come into remote mm -hmm. view, you leave you leave all the bias and the assumptions behind. You just tap into the pure info of the frequency of what is, not what is not. And you report what you're seeing, what yep. what's there. If it's not there, don't don't lie about it, don't exaggerate. Yeah. If you see it, you see it. You report what you see, even if it's wrong of what you remote viewed. That's mm -hmm. okay because necessary, right? It's necessary. part of the process. You have yes. to learn the false positive so you can know what a negative is, or you know what I mean? It's like we have to. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. And and I was taught this as a psychic. What you perceive comes in for you from the energetic energy of the soul field of the person you're reading. It's on multiple levels and information comes from all directions. It's the soul key energy. Yeah. So grab what you're interpreting, bring it back and give it to the person as you saw it or felt it or experienced it. What's theirs, give them what's theirs, but don't put your own spin on what you see. Just give them what you saw, not your own conclusion yeah. or assumption. Yeah. Or interpretation just give it give them the info that comes from their soul vibration yeah I honor agree. the truth honor the exact info you're being given even if it's something they're not ready for to hear if if, if their spirit and higher self allows it to come in ask them well i'm getting something you might not be ready for it do you want to know or not and if they say yes you give it to them there you go if not well, it's always all my sessions are recorded on video and I keep them for two days for people to if they want oh, you keep them for okay cool nice. I nice. keep them for two I days keep for way too long and then I have to like to delete stuff or they yeah take yeah yeah days. Well, I don't know they the, what spirit told me is give the option of having it for two days available to download and if they want it they'll download it if or sometimes yeah. I don't, and I always ask at the end of the session, would you like a copy? And some say, yes, great. And I say two days available. I don't keep them forever because I don't need to keep people's energy. No, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. They have two days to download and save for themselves to look back at what came in from their yeah. own soul frequency or their higher selves or divine. Whatever came in, came in. I don't alter whatever comes in. It's what comes in and I tell them I don't alter it I don't put my bias on it because I'm not allowed to it's not my way it's an I don't do it same with all of this stuff what I experienced was like what I experienced what that's what I put out I don't yeah. edit or micromanage my experiences I, yeah no I like that you can tell there has been a shift in just like the way you have shown yourself over the past couple of years in terms of like embodying authenticity it definitely shows like it really does as a person that also watches you and everyone else. It's like, like, huh? Yeah, definitely shows there's been a lot of growth and just, you know, change. Well, yeah. It has to be integrity. It has to be truthful and it has to be honest because if it's not, it's disrespectful and it doesn't belong out there to put it out there to begin yeah. with. And that's what the council told me, it told me some people will need to be very truthful very soon because They've opened a back door by, by not saying everything that happened or mm -hmm. trying to avoid it because they couldn't still bypass it. They couldn't avoid it, couldn't walk around it. They had to tell a form of truth to release that back door and close it so it doesn't ruin their reputations. Yeah, yeah. And there are several people involved in that, whatever that is. And I, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to go into it. Yeah. Yeah, they, <laughs> and these people have all said what they needed to say, made it public, uh, so the, that back door closes and nobody can hurt their reputations or them. Yeah, oh, totally. Because eventually, if the honesty doesn't come come out when it needs to, it comes back later. Totally. 
And we're in the stage or the lifetime in which everyone's developing the ability and they will soon find out on their own. It's part of that unveiling of hidden knowledge. You know? it, it's like that stretching elastic. If you don't tell your own soul truth, what you need to tell people, because if people watch you and you're like da 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 covering something up, covering, if say you've hosted somebody on your show and that person, okay, they've been inf infiltrated, whatever. If that happens to me, I say, I'm sorry, I can't support this person anymore. This is why, very short, sweet. I say it publicly and I leave it alone. Because I hosted these people, I have responsibility. Um, I tell my truth and I end it so that elastic is not opening a back door for those people to yeah. come back and say to me, well, you know, you hosted me and I said all these things that are not the truth that must mean you agree right nope it doesn't mean i agree it's just i don't leave that little elastic back door totally. looping and boom, it's not going to come back and hit me because look if if i participated in something that was not what i think it is or you know i'll be honest about it and say look hey this happened i don't endorse that person and i don't support them because of this and i close the door i say what i need and that's it. It's closed. That 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 elastic string and that back door of bad energy is not gonna keep 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 keeping me in fear. It's not gonna stay there in fear at any moment. Somebody can expose me now because I knew something about them. Right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Good job staying clear. Good job remaining in integrity. And you know, I mean, seriously though, really. Yeah, well, I, I was, I knew what was happening behind the scenes with some of this situational stuff and the infiltration, but it wasn't my, um, wasn't directly involved, sort of indirectly, wasn't my thing to say more than what I knew. I said what I could, but the other individuals had to come forward at some point too, and they have taken responsibility for it later than usual, but they've still done it because that they're that energy was lurking around. Yeah. What's weird, and maybe this is a totally crazy thing to say. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's like the most bizarre non sequitur. It feels like the disturbance frequency that you're describing that's shared amongst these people would be a very good example of what we talk about when we talk about hostile AI or even the concept of nano neural toxicity. Nano neural toxicity. Yeah. In a group of people. Well, there is also ego involved in, yeah. in, in your own protecting your own reputation and in your own thing that you're doing because you're out there in the forward. You're you're a very popular. Some of these folks are very popular and they're speakers and they've been around for a while. And now yeah. it's all coming back full circle. And honesty is, and integrity is what we need to work with because, hey, if you want to keep speaking and being respected, be truth, truthful and honest. Sometimes stuff happens and we endorse the wrong people. It can happen. It's life. It's human, human stuff. Totally. Consciousness gateways. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I just don't leave that elastic back door swinging open because yeah. I don't, I don't need, and I knew, I knew what was happening, but I couldn't speak can say it all because it wasn't my story to tell still is not but um I, I i tried my best behind the scenes to work the energies so that these people could come forward and speak because yeah. i was interconnected to them in little bits of energies and i'm like okay when 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 is it coming when is it happening it's happened yeah. so uh, and again, indirect, direct connection, you try your best to balance what you need to work with for the highest good of all involved without hurting them, without exposing them. Because it's always, you always, it's a balance of reality. I feel you. Yeah. And, and what's my, and I, I ask myself, what's my responsibility in what I know and what's going on? And it was to share some of it in in a kind compassionate way and let the other people tell their stories when they were good and ready to do so energetically so that's what i did because again i wasn't fully upfront part of what was going on but i was 
behind the scenes and I just I just held to what was honorable and humble. Yeah. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Well, I mean, it's, it wasn't up to me to reveal everything and do everything because I was, I was indirectly involved, but not directly. So I was just waiting for all parties to do what was right. Yeah, I can feel it. It's wild. It's very, very palpable. What a tangled web we weave. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and it's part of our conversation, actually. It's part yeah. of the archships. It's part of the councils. It's all interwoven, and, and it's actually what was happening when when that was happening with those folks and what was coming in and the energy transformational changes. Yeah. It's like stay respectful, stay kind, compassionate, don't judge. Yeah, stay real and just be you. No, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's, it's a moral responsibility not to interfere with human free will. Totally. I feel you. Yeah, thank you. It's yeah. it's the greatest lesson I'm still learning sometimes. Because every everything that happens, I'm, the Council of Nine showed to me that I have a responsibility, what I should and shouldn't do in any type of situation to slow down, assess it, and see what's my part in it and what's not, and what I should should or shouldn't do in any part of what's happening. Because if, if I'm not careful, I can end up being in a lot of trouble that I don't need to be connected to energetically and physically. Yeah. So do the spiritual assessment part. Yeah. Um, think before you leap into the frying pan, so to speak. Oh, totally. Oh, man, totally. And I, 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 will, I will add one, one thing to that. As, as a person who is able to view your sort of like discernment process or the level of security systems you have energetically, I'm really honored that I made it through your, your scanning process. I mean that very sincerely. I'm like, well, okay, that must mean I made it through your, your, your uh, well, security system. So thank you. I yeah, I can tell you're not being controlled. You're not being mind controlled. You're not I don't implanted. Think I <laughs> no, you're not. You're not implanted and you have a sincere, sincere desire to tell the truth and what you understand is the truth in your experiences. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's, I feel very uncomfortable when my psychic ability smells the lies and the insincerity. Oh, yeah, no, you'll get too. it instantly, right? You'll be like, hmm, what the hell? What's this all about? What yeah, it's, <laughs> it's itchy. It's almost like a little uh, uncomfortable feeling. I'm like, something's not right there. And I have to scan it deeper in the person. Because people ask me, how do I do a psychic reading? I'm like, I'm literally, literally seeing inside your soul frequency, your soul. Mm -hmm. And I try to not violate free will, human free will. I'm not looking at your secrets. I'm not digging for secrets. I'm not digging totally. for information yeah. on you. I'm just I'm checking you. Safe. It's, yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a safety parameter check yeah. to make sure you're not being infiltrated. You're not. Sometimes the, the human soul will leave the body for whatever reason and mm -hmm. a nasty thing walks in. It's not always, not always a positive polarity. And when I see that thing inside, that's not you anymore. I'm like, no, I'm not, not going there either. So there's so many different things I check for. The, the walk-in soul thing is another addition that just recently popped in. Nice. Because I could, oh, wow, I love, yeah. It's interesting. And it's like, you check out a safe and clean. Yeah, thank you. I, I mean that very, very sincerely. I, I, I certainly hope so. Well, you, you walk <laughs> I, in your, I hope so. That shows I did something right. You, know you I mean? walk your in, in your integrity. You work with people constantly, so you check yourself. Yeah, I definitely. <laughs> that's literally, I, I, for better or worse, that is the only thing that I do at this stage of my life, which I'm actually honored to be doing very, very, very much so, but it's the only thing we do. But we, we you and I check in that well, we're not infested with something or infiltrated or not targeted because some. Yeah. we could be. It's a possibility. Totally. Well, I think part of our human journey is that most of us are going to have the experience of learning what that feels like at some point, whether it's in childhood through another name or whether it's through this stage, when we realize what's really going on, whatever it is, I think it's the fundamental journey of humans. And so, you know, um, but uh, and anyway. one, yeah, and sometimes I feel something trying to infiltrate, trying to do something. I'm like, nope, back off. 
You do not have the right to do this to me. Cancel, clear, delete, remove, remove, remove. And I do the energetic and the also I do the verbal renouncement. Mm -hmm. Very important. Very important. A lot of people will forget that. Definitely. The sort of like declaration process, incredibly powerful. Yeah, I felt somebody trying to do a magic spell on my body to entangle my body today with somebody else of dark nature. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like a body, body merge with somebody mm -hmm. with dark energy and dark it's magic. Real thing. Totally. And it was happening at 10 a.m. And I'm like, no, I feel I feel it doing the spell and saying the words. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I don't know. I don't I have goosebumps just saying this. I said, I don't give permission. And I started to reverse that magic because it was literally saying body parts connected, body weaving a spell, a weaver body spell. I'm like, no, I'm not connecting with your energy. You're not intertwining your body parts with mine. You're not allowed to do this. Dark magic, revoke, cancel, clear, delete, close the door, unbind this binding and remove the yeah. connection with the body parts. I was literally saying this as fast as I yeah, could. Yeah, for real, yeah create my own energy counter spell to that darkness. And I went away. It, it, I could feel the physical thing that somebody was trying to connect to my physical body through dark magic. Totally. I'm like, no, I didn't even check who it was or the source. I'm like, revoke, clear, close. Do you, I, do you, do you think it was a person or was it a being on the astral plane? Because I think sometimes it's like a crime of opportunity and there's an energy within the vicinity and they'll just like, you know they'll try to do something but sometimes it's people right? i think it was a person trying yeah. to do this so the male persuasion i don't know who but huh uh but i feel felt it was male i'm like nope block yeah. block block but they obviously have um access to energy energetic to physical and they were mm -hmm. trying to weave themselves within my physical body energetically through a spell through dark magic i could feel yeah. Like it's it, very it, real. The signature, and I was like, no, 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 no. This person is trying to entangle their physicality and their soul to my body and take over. Yeah. And I, a crazy thing. Sorry to interrupt, but it feels like whoever that is, they, it, uh, an automatic writing process is very important to them because for some reason, as you're talking about it, it's like there's a hand like scribbling on something. It's a, Maybe uh, a total non sequitur, but <laughs> no, I, I feel they use yeah. words and magic intertwined together to create weaver spells. That's a body weaver spell mm -hmm. from what I can understand. And I'm like, nope, yeah. shutting that down. You don't have the right and I'm countering your spell with my own energy spell to block you and remove you from my physical body and my energetic body. Yeah, you don't belong in my soul field. Get out and just and I'm saying this because this happened to me. I could feel the infiltration and the process yeah. happening exactly how I'm like, counter this quickly. Use your own magic psychic words to, boom. and I didn't say it out loud. I said it psychically. Yeah, yeah. I said it psychically because words were power in this particular yeah. instance. It's like revoke them. Yeah. Dude, way to go, man. <laughs> well, it, it, it felt very uncomfortable. It woke me up. Yeah. It's like, but that can happen. That's totally. a form of oh, infiltration and it's an attack. Dude, I have I have had that where there there was one time in particular, or there was a period in a whole other stage of my life where there's a lot of that stuff going on. And there were there were two days in particular, and it happened two days in a row where as I woke up, it was like there was some being with their with me as I was waking up, and he was like, Oh yeah. It was like a voice literally going, Oh yeah, come on, like this creepy like thing. And it was and it was very, very much like you're talking about, like it was someone actually saying it. And I felt that it was somebody that who had the ability to like, let's get in there and see what we can do, you know, and, 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 very and, did, much it, like you're saying. and did it want to experience having sex in a physical body, yeah, like yeah. sexual vibration? Yes, totally. Absolutely it feels, what it was. And it was this, it was a voice of an old guy. And he was like, oh yeah. Uh, and I was like, uh, you know, this crazy. It, it's <laughs> real like thing. he wanted to have sex, but it's not incarnate anymore. Yes. It, it, this very person much. 
is not in physicality and they can't feel a physical sensation. So like, why don't I hop into another young man's yep. body and just try it out for a ride and oh, yeah. go well, have yeah. sex? It's very, very much what it felt like. It, it was like two days in a row and it was yeah. during this period where a lot of stuff like that was happening to me and then creepy. You know, went away and I, you know, one of those wild things. But And you're <laughs> like, that's not me. Yeah, it was, I'm, it was. I'm not, a, I'm not addicted to sexual fornication. Yeah, no, totally. It was, it was, it was one of those stages where I think we all go through something similar in the early awakening period where something is so blown open. It's so blown open that if there's somebody or something around, you're going to, you know, it's yeah. there. It's like all your windows and doors are wide open. Anyone can walk through. But the guy used your tattoos to energetically connect because he liked your oh, tats. Really? Wow, really? I believe it. Yeah. Oh, I can feel it. Wow, that's wild. I can feel the energy when you say yeah, that. He that liked your sure. tats because yeah. he always wanted tats but never got his own. So he connected. He thought, he thought that was a sexy vibration. Yeah. That, oh, so that's yeah. part of how it started. And then he's like, oh, he's in a phys fit physical body. I want to have sex through his body. And you're like, ew, get out. That's it's creepy. Totally. Well, thanks for tuning into that. I could tell you like instantly went, you instantly grabbed onto it. That's it cool. was an old dude. Yeah. It's like yeah. old. He no longer has a body. So he's an incarnate human being who passed away, never quite left. Mm -hmm. He yeah. wanted to experience sexual something experience yeah. and he wanted tats and he saw your body fit physically right. fit emotionally balanced has great tattoos why don't i hop in and take him for yeah. a ride totally that's that is the nature of the astro or the lower the lower mm -hmm. astral realm which yeah, yeah. <laughs> at, at one person this this guy at one point he was alive he was an alive old guy yeah I but it. he never quite journeyed through the experiences that he wanted before his death so he's like i'm a hippie i'm gonna jump into him and i'm gonna experience something it was a temporary idea it was mm -hmm. temporary it wasn't like full possession full-on possession he just wanted some experiences and then hop mm -hmm. in help out temporary yep. situation but you see right. it's like no 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 you don't you don't get to use my body for this and that i am Totally. I, oh, I am grateful that I've only, I have, I have never really had a full sleep uh, paralysis episode. I have had very close things where it was like something came over me and a thing happened, but for some reason, and I don't know, maybe this is a thing that other people can do. I've, I was always able to like, ugh, like pull out of something in a weird way. I do not know how that is possible, but yeah. Yeah. Well, well I've, I've I've experienced genetic paralysis because genetically I have familial hemiplegic migraines type two. So sometimes the brain disconnects, you get a migraine, then you get full on paralysis. You can't talk properly. You can't see you're blind. You have ringing in the ears. You can't speak. The mind disconnects from the body and the body, the, the blood vessels just shrink. It's vascular constriction and you're paralyzed. The thing is, I know how that feels and looks. I know it's, if it's migraine related or if it's an entity, because when it's an entity, the paralysis is less than what the genetic migraines are. Yeah, yeah. So I know the difference between the two because, man, right. I've been blind temporarily. I couldn't, I've been deaf yeah. temporarily. I've had my mind disconnected during those migraines. I've had paralysis. And I've, I've, I've learned how to heal on myself and do certain diets and things so that doesn't yeah. not happen to me often but at one point it was constant yeah. it's like sometimes it slips through you know hum humans if i eat something I'm not, I'm not supposed to sometimes you do you can't can't be perfect i'm not perfect yeah. i eat certain things sometimes that i'm not supposed to yeah yeah I indulge. Do you think some of the some of the some of the reasons why you had to go through that. Do you think those are after effects from the many tours and the many places and the times that you've been other beings out there or secret space program stuff? Do you feel like it's a holdover from some of that? Because I know not, for some for some of us it can be for others. I'm not, not using that as an excuse. My mother yeah. has this genetically, and my grandmother, and she's had forms uh, of that too. So I I'm not going to use that as an excuse. I don't okay. think so. Okay. I don't think so. No. Um, I've had other weird body things happening where my joints and now click and pop and my jaw dislocates. I think that's genetic interference with the SSP stuff. 
crazy thing. Get ready. <laughs> it feels like it's related to shape shifting abilities that you had at one point, and you were you were able to like literally switch and change your your physicality on a way. And so it's like something is a little bit looser now. Yeah, it's, it's hypermobility. Now. My joints feel loose. Yeah. But I've adapted to it, so it's like I I can't really move my jaw too much because then it pops and clicks and and I found ways. I'm like I just pop it back in and away we go. Nice. <laughs> I, I, just, I just put my jaw back in. It's all yeah, good. I have my yeah. shoulders, my jaw. I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. I, oh, it is what it is. It's a, it's a genetic shift frequency. I hope it's not permanent and it's temporary and will go away. I'm working on mind frequency that it goes away because this is not what I want to wear as a badge of honor. Yeah. Not what I asked for. So, but hey, I don't use excuses. This is from past things that are I'm glad still you do. attached thank you to for, me. Yeah, no, thank you for not, thank you for not, you know, making that the sole story of how we get to no, where we are. Because for some of us, it's a factor. Some of us live by it. Some of us were like, yeah, that's a thing anyway. No, my you mom know? genetically has it. My grandmother yeah. had it because I see my mom sometimes has a fever and a migraine and that's, it's not from the cold or the flu. It's, it's just the genetics doing their weird thing. It's yeah. part of her symptoms. I never have a fever but it's part of her symptoms and she sometimes has paralysis uh, um so i mean it, it is genetic i could even i i i even isolated the genetic mutation within myself and uh, for sure. for a lot of years people thought i had conversion disorder that it was all psychosomatic huh. and i'm like that's not psychosomatic that's a genetic mutation and then and then they had me do a genetic test Prove the exact mutation that I was saying that I suspected I had. Because I, I do medical intuitive right. body scans yeah. to see what root causes of diseases, emotional mm -hmm. issues are. I did it within myself, and that's like, yeah, that's in there. So let's just eat healthier. Let's not be a night vampire and stay up too late because that can trigger it. Bright lights can trigger it. A lot of things can trigger it. I know the triggers. So I've just been living a healthier lifestyle, not to be triggered. Yeah. And I own it. It's it's like, hey, I want to be healthier, so I'll be healthier. Yeah. Well, I love it. Yeah. Good job, yeah. man. <laughs> For real, like you're definitely tuned in. I, I, I well, deeply admire that. Well, I mean, and I've written it in my books. I've talked about it. It's, it's not like I have this as a secret. It's not a secret. Totally. I think a lot of what I do is a lot of like medical intuitive stuff in this weird way, like people that do sessions with me and it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a cringe thing now to say it, but it's like a mix between going to see a psychic, a shaman and an alien doctor all at the same time. And it's very much like that. And you will yes. tune into the organs and the layers of the body. And in many cases, I, I've been given, I shouldn't say many, in a couple of cases, you've been, I've been given, you know, knowledge about things within the body that, you know, even they did not know, and it went and got checked out. And sure enough, you know, there was this thing, you know, it, and so it, 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 we will really tune into that. It is absolutely. Yeah. Brutal. yeah and I mean, um, when I did a medical intuitive scan on, on somebody and they couldn't get it up, let's just say that, you know what that is, right? It couldn't, they couldn't get it up. And I'm like, you have erectile dysfunction. It just yeah. popped out of my mouth. And he's like, I did not feel comfortable talking about that. I wasn't even going to bring it up. I'm like, but that's what's bothering you right now. And that's what I saw. So let's work on those blood vessels in, in, in yeah. that particular organ to remove that particular blockage. So, you know, the testicles start moving again. Yeah. The penis starts moving again. And I'm yeah. not afraid to say the names of the things that oh, are working. Good. Yeah. It, it was erectile dysfunction. And I it just spirit just blurted it out of my mouth yeah and the person said i was so embarrassed to talk about that and like with, that's what'll have to happen though right it has to be said out loud and then something kind of yeah but the thing like, is nothing no nothing ever anymore embarrasses me i'm not a blushing bride i've heard it all <laughs> i've seen i've seen things i wish i haven't seen but it's you can't shock me people try but you can't shock me anymore because I've been shocked so many yeah. times. At this point, I just smile and say, look, just be truthful with what you're coming in to be healed for. Because if, if you don't tell me, I'll likely discover it myself while I'm scanning you anyways. 
Because when I, when I scan a person, I see blue energy, I see you naked, I see you energetically, I see mm -hmm. you physically. Don't, there, there's, you don't, it's totally. okay. The day you were born with, however you were born with, is what I'll see. Or if mm -hmm. something came in later, I'll see that. So don't worry about it. I still see you naked anyway, so don't worry about <laughs> it. Nice. No, totally. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It doesn't that. matter, man, woman, child, old, young, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. I'll still see it. Yeah, it becomes that, sort of kind of like a clinical thing. It's it like is a very, clinical thing. Yeah, totally. But with compassion. Clinical yeah. doctors are not, some of them are not compassionate. This is done with compassion and without judgment. There's no bias on my end. I don't make assumptions. I don't make conclusions. I check the body of the soul and the energy to see what's there and what's not there. Yeah. I don't I, That's how I do it because... Some people say, I think I have this, I think I have that. I'm like, well, let's have a look at what you're having and what you're not having. Let's scan, let's do the scan. Because yeah. again, I'm not gonna purely go on what they tell me, because it might be that or it might be something else or that and something, something, something extra. Yeah. So I would love to do a session trade with you at some point if you ever want to. I mean that very, very sincerely. Just in case that ever shows up on your timeline, you'll know to reach out. Yeah. I, yeah, right now I'm getting, you're supposed to teach me and you're teaching me right now. Nice. Thank you. So it, it came in as a teaching opportunity and I don't think crazy. That's literally what <laughs> that's like my whole assignment right now is doing that. That's rad. Thank you. <laughs> that's cool. So that's why this is not an interview. It's a teaching opportunity for the yeah. both of oh, us. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And, and I, I tried with you last year about that person to share that experience and it wasn't meant to be in that capacity. And so oh, I was also, I was under attack so bad at the whole, yeah. Lord, oh, what a horrible time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what a horrible experience. Yes. Yeah, Very formative. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when we're telling the truth, we get attacked. It's part oh, of, it's part of it. And I'm not saying that certain types of People will be attacked, but sometimes things happen when you tell the truth. And right. It's normal. When you go into an area where there's a certain type of frequency, that frequency, when called out, is going to, it's going to want to yeah, do a yeah. thing, you know, and you'll feel it. Those that are tuned in, you'll feel it. Yeah. And Spirit said, it's okay, back off. He'll come to you with what he will come to you a year later almost to talk. <laughs> it was a year later, right? Because he, he has a teaching opportunity he'll want to talk to you about. That's what Spirit told me. I'm like, oh, okay, that's so cool. Whoa, rad. let him come when he comes and he's ready for it. It's not going to be about that because I did that on my own. I did yeah. a video about it to, to, well, I, I don't, I remember what it was. Was it about the, the whole video thing or something else entirely? It was, um, a, it was, Sorry, I know we're going on and on. Yeah, it was Sorry, a sequence of more and more questions. Yeah, it was a sequence of videos that you guys did with the victims of the people yeah. that the person was defrauding and using in the wrong way. Um, and I had my own experience with that person and I wanted to contribute. Oh, yeah. But you were at the end of that project and you said, I'm sorry. Well, it's, it's, I will tell you why, really, like the reason why I had to drop that. And it sucks to open that little weird can of worms here at the end, but it was because everyone within that project was equally as toxic and equally as hostile as the person that we made it about. Mm -hmm. Every single one, every single element of that entire equation, except for two people, which I, I know we're doing the vague, we're not naming them thing, the stupid thing, but except for two people who are in different positions in media and other places, they were not part of that frequency range, but I was fundamentally and utterly attacked by those very people within that group that I made videos with to the extent that I allowed it to sit there up until maybe two months ago. And, and the signal came in literally from those energies and they were like, pull it off, pull it off. It has, it is of no consequence. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, sometimes we have the right to pull off our channels, what no longer serves too. Um, it was a whole, it was a whole other separate channel. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, and it's good, but still, you can pull that at any time once it no longer serves the energetic frequencies. It yeah. taught people to see the truth and to discern for themselves. I think that's why you did this because it was to help people to learn the truth and to learn honest discernment skills, intuitive skills, by showing them the truth. Yeah. Even whether those people were toxic or why or how doesn't matter anymore. 
but they gave parts of the truth that needed to come forward because they mm -hmm. themselves were abused and victimized by this mm -hmm. person who has that programming running in their head, Trojan horse. Oh yeah, that's a literally a real thing. Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> it's so literally real. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, it served its purpose, and now it's no longer serving, and can be taken, removed, and taken down. Yeah, who knows? Maybe it'll come back one day, but well, I like, kind of doubt it. I'm like, we don't even need it, you know? No, no, that um, that person is experiencing their own karma, and if they mm -hmm. learn, they learn. If they don't, it'll be repeated next time again until it's completed. Yeah. So they're on their path and but people know that they throw that people know that that person uses others and throws them under the bus makes them toxic so yeah. that's what you put out there just be yeah. know what what that capability is of that person simplistic and and don't fall victim to them because yeah. oh yeah and I run into that person several times on social media and I, I just turn left when I see them. Mm. Or uh, hear I, them. I actually greatly value what they say. I take it as pure enter entertainment value now. It's like mm -hmm. a show that I'm like, yeah, let's check it out. Hey, all right, cool. Yeah, and I've- That's Really I've, how I feel, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and, and I've tuned into, I've, sometimes I've also looked and it's like, yep, he's, they're telling some truth here. This Actually, is, yeah, that's the crazy thing. There is. There's been a few things recently where I'm like, oh my lord. Okay, so I guess you are really seeing some stuff. All right, you know, but yeah, you know, what's, what is the motivation behind it? You know, exactly. And, you know, twist, you know, yep, with yep, yep. That person always has a motivation and an agenda. They're always yeah. spinning the spider web. That's Everybody okay. that watches this is going to be like, oh my god, you guys are lame. You're just talking in <laughs> about people in. Uh, in directly, but, but it's totally cool everybody knows well yeah. spirit said you can tr talk about the truth in cer certain formats but you don't yeah. drop names you don't do oh, name yeah. dropping i'm not supposed to be q who drops crumbs breadcrumbs of totally. don't have to be q just have to be honest but without judging the people for their yeah. actions totally we'll send it out on a telepathic wavelength three two one everybody knows in the age of yes. fourth density all is yes known. yes anyway <laughs> yeah so we've been going on and on thank you yeah I really but, appreciate you yeah is there anything else that you would um, like to share that's important to you at this you time? know there 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 probably is and I'm, I'm 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 sort of drawing blanks i know that there was a whole list of things many of those that we actually did talk about i think in sort of getting back to the heart of what we were called to discuss today there there is a very legitimate frequency from orion that is available for those of us that are on the path of ascension right now it is part of a timed development and awakening of layers of dna within the energy body for those that choose to grab onto it for those that choose to improve their discernment and activate the human body one of the easiest ways to do it right now is through the old school version of staring into the candle but also through continuing to exercise your discernment and you know i guess to add you know one last thing on to that uh, we really are in the age of telepathic conversation and so one of the ways in which people really need to kind of understand the way spirit is contacting us right now it's literally through the dialogue that occurs within our body and so um you know i'm sure there will be other things as well but yeah for the time being i think that's what people need to know and so yeah at any time if something comes in opportunity like you shared with me come in yeah. I am, I really appreciate like, that, yeah. like I said, I am neutral. I don't take sides. I don't put labels. Spirit said, observe and listen and understand truth, honor and respect and humbleness. That's something that's part of my mission at this point to do going forward and to let people share their stories in an yeah. honest, open format. Which you, which you really do, by the way. I really do appreciate that. Like you, you know, you sort of like let people speak in a way that's very cool without trying to be like, wait, do you mean da 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 da? You know, because some people will totally angle you and be like, hmm, you know. Oh, no, yeah. that's. Yeah, open. I don't like it when I'm when people are angling me that way. So mm -hmm. I don't try not to do that because it doesn't feel honorable to. If if you have something you want to say, you need to say it, and I'm listening to the frequency of it and observing. I'm observing what the frequency is. And if it's truthful, it continues. If it's not, then I sort of 
change direction if if need be but with you it's it's it's, it's your own sincere experiences coming forward to be shared and i and i can feel that so i just i just let it flow naturally where it needs to flow keeping in mind what you had sent me to stick to yeah. that format as well but to let in anything else that comes in as well to to oh, explore because you're teaching me and you're teaching others so it's like let the teacher teach oh thank you i mean that very very sincerely let me know if you ever want to do a remote viewing kind of thing on on one of your things because for some reason like the a lot of that is very accessible for people right now just the process of like the the gateway that opens that allows the remote viewing process which it's like a it's from what i can tell it's a collection of chakras it's not an actual gateway it's like the frequency will kick on it's very possible and just the act of talking about it for people and hearing other people talk about it will actually teach people how to use that ability now it's like a thing you'll get exposed to so yeah, yeah. anytime I, you want to talk about it let me know thank you well there there's a list there's a list of what people have requested me to remote view so I can send you the list and we can have a look at what you think oh, is appropriate. I would love to. Yeah, yeah. What's, love well, to. and also remote viewers have a choice to choose what they want to remote view and what they don't, what they feel yeah. comfortable with. So I'll send you that list. Yeah, and I feel like we did something like that as well at one point, right? I feel, yeah. Was that you? Yeah, it was like yeah, this. Yeah, that's, that's how we, yeah. that was the SSP yeah. list of all the bases. Oh, the yeah. Okay. Whoa, well, I remember that. Thanks. Sorry. I'm like, so much has transpired since then. I'm like, yeah. I, I have a photographic memory. Yeah. Every, even if I want to forget something, I never will. <laughs> it's cataloged. It's like, and I used to be a cataloger and a library technician. So every, everything is filed, mm -hmm. remembered and cataloged in the human brain. And that's what my implants used to do. Well, you're really good at it. Yeah. Well, now it's just, just these implants trained my brain to do it. So now it just does now it automatically. Organic version, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, even those implants had their purpose, oh. and they were part of my experience, which I don't regret. I don't regret anything that's happened to me, good or bad. I don't regret anything because I've learned from everything that's happened to me. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I'll send you that list yeah, and you have. Know have a look what feels good for you to and we can select something I, and... I look forward to it definitely mm -hmm. yeah and thanks for thank you for hanging out with me for two and a half hours oh I, <laughs> who I, do, can, who do? Yeah. I can sit there for hours yeah listening no it's to totally people. cool like I I have very I have very much enjoyed it thanks thank you yeah. me too and I'll send you a link to this cool yeah let's do it Awesome. Thank you so much, Matthew. Absolutely. See you in the future, guys. Yep. Take care out there later. Have a good one. Bye.